What's up, YouTube? We got another extinction spreadsheet for video for you today. For those of you that have never seen this before, the extinction spreadsheet is basically the culmination of all of the testing and research that I initially did on this game to find like damage values and uh, multipliers and regen and, and all of the stuff that there's no information for out there. Um, but with this latest version, I've enlisted the help of my buddy Extra Beer here, as well as uh, yeah. another guy for score. But as well as Billo. Yep. <laughs> the crew. Yeah, it's a it's been a group effort now, and yeah. it's uh, going to 52 pages of pure information dump, <laughs> and it's uh, insane. But I think we cover like almost everything you can ever know about extinction in here. It's it's pretty comprehensive at this point. So we've got our we've got our nice let's cover page just go. here. Yeah, it's beautiful. The hive mind. <laughs> yeah, and then um. I love it. A, a new a new addition is we have it's the table the of contents sure. at the beginning now instead of the table of contents being halfway through the uh, spreadsheet. So that's a little bit smarter. Oh lol. <laughs> yeah. The 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 spreadsheet is divided kind of into two parts. The first half of it is was made in Excel and it's just a bunch of tables and charts and data. And then the second half is more about notes. So it's in a Word document, so there's just paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs of information down there. Yeah, just a bunch of text with really useful info though. But we didn't know how to so it's just become a bunch of text. <laughs> yeah. I at least we at least made First it part's format really nice well. though. <laughs> yeah, the the if you're if you're gonna look yeah. at this for like thirty seconds, and check I mean, out the information just needs to be somewhere. Yeah, right. But the uh, yeah. the most important part of this spreadsheet is pretty much these first two pages of it here. Um, what you're looking at is all of the weapons for the game with damage values that uh, we tested, hopefully against the ancestor challenge, the one that tells you to deal five thousand. Uh, damage to the ancestors critical hit points because you can just read damage values off of that uh, yeah. except all the guns that are on Exodus that challenge isn't available so uh, I had to get a little creative and testing them against uh, other enemies but I'm pretty pretty confident in most of these numbers now um, <laughs> so to walk you through the yeah they're looking good yeah right especially all everything that's like a lower damage number, is pretty good. The only stuff that's like a little bit skeptical is like uh, like the MR28 and then the sniper rifles. They're weird. <laughs> They're yeah, very... but nobody uses sniper rifles yeah. anyway, so right. And <laughs> it doesn't even matter how much damage. Only the VTS the... has been tested so much. <laughs> so yeah, there, there's all sorts of crazy multipliers and and things that just work and don't work, and you, it's bad. <laughs> yeah. Um. A big thing that's added in this spreadsheet is the rapid fire uh, DPS values. Yep. So uh, we now know how much the rapid fire increases the fire rate, and with that, we could easily calculate all the rapid fire DPSs, mm -hmm. uh, which is really nice to know to compare it to like guns that don't uh, work with rapid fire. Yes, and a little a little further down in the spreadsheet, I I have a a comparison of every single weapon that can take both rapid fire and extended mags, and you can directly compare their DPS values, um, but to explain yeah, like really cool. how uh, I decided to like order these guns, so they you know every every gun has a damage and then a fire rate. This is just bullets per minute, right? And so from that you can get a D a DPS value damage per second. I think this is probably like the most tangible way to understand how good a weapon is. It's just this is just a measure of how fast this gun kills something up close if you don't miss any bullets, right? So you get... Yeah. Th these values are, you know, um, it, a little bit idealized, right? Because in, in reality, there's going to be damage drop involved and you're going to miss, but it's a pretty good I, um, way to rank the guns and have an understanding of what's better and what's worse. Yeah, so for example, if you go up to a mammoth that's just spawning and use infinite bullets and you just spray, this is the, the rankings of all guns. Yep. 
So, for example, the bulldog can kill incredibly fast if you up close in his face. Because if you take like two steps away, you're already getting a damage drop. If you're like 10 steps away, it doesn't do damage. But in the ideal scenario, the damage would be 3,000, for example. Later on in the spreadsheet, um, we do actually have those damage drop curves for a select number of weapons. It's only the guns that are on Exodus, so we can use the Ancestor Challenge and have a holographic site, um, because the hollow site gives you a, a, a damage drop read-off that tells you where you are on your uh, damage drop curve. But other than those like eight or something weapons that applies to, uh, there would be no way uh, for me to be able to reliably and accurately test the damage and range values of all these guns, um, you know, and get numbers that actually matter at all. So I'm I'm leaving the yeah. full like damage drop plot nightmare situation until someone data mines this and we just get the numbers. Yeah, I think uh, with the range values you have, you can get an estimate of how assault rifles, SMGs, and shotguns behave. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely something. Right. Yeah, it's got a few comparisons in there, and you know, for for the most part, pretty pretty much unless you're shooting at like a gargoyle, almost all the stuff you do is pretty close. So. Yeah, you know, for sure. <laughs> these like if you have an assault good. or an SMG, you're never gonna notice the damage tool. Right. It's like the the only time I can think. Oh, yeah, w shotguns have a massive damage drop. It's, it's bad. <laughs> that's the one gun you really struggle with, and gargles, of course. Yeah, gar gargles. And if you have the range easy. challenge, then you also struggle with it. I'm just thinking, like that second area of point of contact. I feel like that's like the most long range, because you know you chill on on top of like that building, and then you're just shooting shit whenever mm. it hops over the fence, because they all have to come from out of bounds in. But like, other than that, it's pretty it's pretty close usually. Yeah. Um, and then on the... the protected drill, stand close to it. Yeah. On the uh, right side of this first page here, I've got um, just like a quick cheat sheet of uh, pretty much everything, everything relevance, uh, HP values for solo. This used to be split between um, two player HP values that were pulled directly out of the data mine and then one player HP values that weren't uh, in the data mine and I had to test them myself but that's kind of confusing to look at uh so what i've yeah. consolidated all down nice. to just it's one player hp and then these are the multipliers um so if for if you have one person in your lobby you know you get these values if you have two people you get 11 percent more damage three it's 44 percent, and then four it's double health um these numbers 11 yeah. percent and 44 percent are kind of like weird but the reason is because is because I think the game was based around two players, and so you're whenever you're in solo, it gives them like a like a ninety percent HP, you know. But I've just mm -hmm. I've just flipped that conversion around to keep it all consistent. Yeah, so that's why the numbers are a bit weird, but it works. Yeah, and there's a this is like the uh, the cheat sheet version of the enemy HP table. There's a much more detailed one like a couple pages further in. Yeah, but it's nice to have it here so you can see like, oh, an arc is uh, three shots on the scout. Right. And if you have like an arc on it, it would be a two shot. And those kind of comparisons. Yep. Okay, and then I was just, this one note here. So rapid fire increases the fire rate by 17% with no penalties to damage range and a 5% increase to visual recoil. That's important because uh, in a lot of COD games, Rapid Fire does not do that. Like, norm, the norm for Rapid Fire is that it tanks your range and it makes your gun kick a lot, but yeah. in, in this game, it does not affect your range at all, and it puts... It's it just puts a, a buff. <laughs> yeah, right, it's just straight uh, a buff. It puts a little bit of a recoil increase, and then also because you're shooting bullets faster, it's going to have you know an even more but the um the recoil decrease value from the foregrip is bigger than five percent so a foregrip if you have rapid fire with a foregrip it like totally cancels it out 
Yeah, pretty. It's, it's great. And if you're using like a chainsaw, you don't even have visual recoil. You just pull it like that. <laughs> yeah, or you, you just put the enemy in the middle of your screen and it goes away. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it just goes. On the yeah, then we have some more guns. Yep. Are you on the second or the third page? Or I guess second. It, yeah, second page. Yeah. So I I sorted this uh this section here so that the first page is all the crap. Uh, that can have a rapid fire, and then the second page is all the stuff that doesn't. Yeah, and so they're a little simpler, sense. right? They only have one DPS value. Um, and on the on the right, this is the color code uh, that we establish and kind of just keep using this for the entire rest of the spreadsheet. So if you see, you'll see this keep popping up anytime like a DPS or a magazine size is mentioned. Uh, and it's just a, it's just kind of a, a quick visual way to, to, you know, estimate how good yeah. each thing is. So you can immediately see like red is shit, purple is amazing, and like blue, greenish is like normal. Yeah. <laughs> On the second page, a lot of these guns are semi-auto, uh, and or like <laughs> the semi the. The semi-auto guns in Extinction are sometimes, like, absolutely insane. Totally fucking unbalanced at all. <laughs> like, the, yeah, the VKS can be sick. Yeah. And keep in mind, with, uh, with these, with these semi-auto guns, the MR28, VKS, Bulldog, MTS, in order to actually get these crazy high, you know, highest DPS in the game uh, values, you actually have to, like, practice with it. It's it's not just like spamming the trigger as fast as possible, because um, there's like a the game yeah. has has features built in to keep people from using like an auto clicker to just shoot an entire mag in half a second. Um, so you have to like you have to like get this rate of fire and like match it as a rhythm. <laughs> yeah. There's, so there's like a, if you press an unlimited amount of times in a second you only get a cert certain amount of fire rate but if you go a slight bit slower than the maximum or no wait if you go faster than that fire rate but slower than the maximum you can go faster yeah. and it's it's really hard to do <laughs> but uh, yeah. you can shoot ridiculously fast with the bulldog and the vks so it's... that's also why those barrier hives die so quickly by it yeah especially <laughs> Oh, what, one other thing you gotta worry about when you're doing that is um, when you get frame drops, like uh, when you oh, blow yeah. up all the propane tanks and it, it like shits on your graphics card, <laughs> that that like messes up the fire cap of these semi-autos, which is a little a little weird, but get used to it. Yeah. Also, if you have the bulldog and you shoot like uh, really fast, faster than the the fire rate cap, uh, you can have so much recoil that your gun disappears. <laughs> oh. What? You just—you have, have never seen that. No. <laughs> oh, it's really funny. If you have like infinite bullets with weapon specialists, you can keep shooting, and your gun would slowly like start going down. Yeah. But you still shoot straight forward, so it doesn't matter. But it's uh, really funny. Yeah, I've noticed with like the VKS, uh, when you shoot it for a really long time with the weapon specialist, it's like it kicks a bunch at the beginning, but eventually it just stops kicking, uh, and then after you <laughs> stop shooting, it it falls all the way down to the ground, you know? And I, I, think oh, yeah, what's, yeah. I think what happens there is uh, there's, like, a maximum value that your gun can kick to. Like, it, it can only go so high. Uh, and so once you get to that point, it can't go anywhere, so it just doesn't kick. But when you stop shooting, it tries to recenter itself. But its center is now, like, way down in the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> Little notes on this page here so the m9 is a burst fire um i think it's the only burst fire by default gun in the game and yeah it is it sucks <laughs> yeah it's 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 trash and so the rate of fire and dps values that i'm uh, reporting here are for the overall burst right so it shoots three shots and then you gotta wait a sec and then you can shoot another three shots so within the within the burst, it's shooting pretty much almost as fast as the MP443 Grok, but you can't continuously shoot that fast. So 
this this takes into account the amount of time you have to wait between bursts, and that's why its DPS is so low. Then, yeah, but that's good. Yeah. Is with the shotguns, they all do the same damage. They they each shoot eight pellets. Each of the pellets does um seventy five damage. That was a that was a fun one to figure out. <laughs> I had yeah. to like make a whole like table. Less work. Of of possible. Yeah, yeah, it's like, w once I notice it, like, oh, thank god, they all do the same damage, but yeah, yeah. in order to figure that out with the Ancestor challenge, I had to, like, um, because, you know, you shoot it, and you don't know how many pellets hit, but you get yeah, the value, yeah. and, you know, that value is, you, when you divide it by the number of pellets you hit, it gets, like, an integer, so there was, like, a whole fucking, it, it was a <laughs> mess, but I'm, I'm happy with these numbers. <laughs> yeah. Then. So the bulldog gets the highest fire rate, so it has the highest DPS. The MTS has a little bit low fire rate, but it's a uh, bigger range. Yeah. And then you have the tech, which is like a lot of bullets, which you also have to reload for it's so ten minutes. It's so slow. <laughs> it's terrible, and FP6 is, uh, yeah, it's a gun. Yeah, I mean, it's... there's a high chance of finding an arc attachment, but that's about it. Yeah, you know the FP6. Um... In uh, on day one edition, it can find ra it can equip rapid fire. Yeah, and yeah, that's. Insane. I think I think that's why it can't have an extended mag, is because at only launch only gun that yeah. can't have an extended mag. And it's it's so silly because it's like the one shotgun that like you actually could put an extended mag on realistically. Yeah. Um. And yeah, it, and you also really need it on that gun. Yeah, it's it would make it like, I, I don't know, I wouldn't say more Usable. viable, but. It would be more fun. <laughs> um, Definitely. But yeah, so I think I think it had the rapid fire at launch, and the devs are like, like, oh mm. god, why does this have a rapid fire? Prevent it from taking that category <laughs> of attachment at all, and that's why it can't have an extended mag. Yeah, that's probably like, what happened. I guess. Um. Okay, then we have uh, the knife. Which we also tested. You can test it on the ancestor. Yep. It and had, uh, we were I... thinking it would do less than 250 damage because the scout had 250 health. But uh, it can't one shot a scout in uh, solo. So there is probably like a 0 0.9 multiplier in place <laughs> to prevent you from one knifing scouts yeah. well, it's, on solo, which is super weird. It's actually not probably. We found it in the code. There's a there. You found it in the code. Yeah, yeah. Like we found the <laughs> the thing, and it's like there's like a multiplier. It's like 0 0.9, and then you know there's a comment next to it, and it literally just says like like 0.9 x multiplier to prevent it from one shotting in solo. It's like the reason. It's so weird. But. If you're in two-player, it does the 250 damage, right? Yeah. Well, mm. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. It, a lot of these multipliers and shit, like, when you start thinking about it too hard, <laughs> like... Yeah. Th things just don't make sense, but... Yeah, this is this is just a thing that's in the game for some reason. <laughs> it's stupid. I think it's because in solo, like, everything has... The 0.9x health multiplier, so they brought the melee da damage down too, or something like that. Mm, yeah, probably. I don't know. It's. But if you have armor piercing yeah, ammo in your gun, and you have the armor piercing ammo upgrade, <laughs> and you knife a scout in the armor, you're you get an armor piercing knife that gets the AP ammo bonus damage in one shots. <laughs> yeah, that's super stupid, though. It's just. It's I love just, it though. It just works. It's so funny how a knife gets affected by whatever gun you hold. Yeah, it's like the the grenade. Like the venom, also. Oh yeah, yeah. That's. I we'll guess that's, get to that later. That's. I didn't realize <laughs> that's the same game mechanic. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's fantastic. Also, if you have double wield pistols, you have more range with your knife, which is also stupid. <laughs> Oh, we will man. get to that later. There's a comment about it in miscellaneous, I think. Yep. <laughs> oh man. All right, next page. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Next page. Page five of out of fifty. You're gonna be here for a while. Yep. The Venomax, uh, mess of a gun. <laughs> yeah, fucking nightmare. So. Yeah, but uh, in. 
Yeah, you go. Okay, okay. This one was difficult to assign a DPS value to, because there's a lot of different damages and a lot of different possibilities. So, um, what I went with was, if you shoot uh, both of your shots, so like, boom, boom, you blow them up, uh, and then the amount of time it takes for you to shoot those shots, and then reload the next one, in, next one's in, so that you can shoot it again. I take I took that total damage that would be dealt in that amount of time, and that's your DPS here, and it's a lot lower than I thought it would be. Yeah, because it absolutely melts the breeder, so I also thought it would be higher. Right. Yeah. But it probably melts the breeder because you can't miss. Like other guns, it's really hard to hit the breeder with. Right. Yeah. And it just... Venom just always hits. The, the explosion does 1,800, which is, like, enough to one-shot a hunter uh, with some room to spare. But you'll need two of these to take out, like a, like, a phantom or a gargoyle. And then the gas is... So the gas, this is... Strong. Yeah, real, real strong. 250 per pulse for 10 pulses at 2 pulses per second. Anytime there's pulses involved, it's so wordy because... But, yeah, what this means is 2 pulses a second, so, like... It hits really fast, yeah. and it's doing enough damage to one-shot a scout every single time. Yeah, if a scout runs into it, it just dies. If a hunter is in it for a bit, it just dies. Yeah, and I if you the shoot a like, rhino with a, with a venom, the gas actually deals more damage to the rhino than the explosion itself. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's a good way to kill a rhino. Just like hit it with, with like two venom shots, and then switch over to another weapon to finish it off, and it goes down real quick. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Or you just uh, throw a venom on the drill while you do something else, and the gas will just protect it for a while. Yeah. Very cool gun. Yeah, amazing gun. <laughs> it's so I I love how um. It's like a. I like how they handled the incorporation of it into like the gameplay loop. It's not like a thunder gun, right? Where the thunder gun is just like, oh, this is just no, the best no. thing ever, and you'll never use anything else once you get it. Um, it's like a, it's, yeah. it's literally just like an extra, like, tool for you to use, you know? Yeah, exactly. It's, a it's, it's very limited by its ammo. Yeah. Which only drops, like, every 30 seconds? What is it? I, I think it's, like, 45, but... 45. Something oh. like that. Yeah, that's, a that's, a that's another thing. <laughs> the Venom ammo, so, it looks like it's a random drop from enemies. It's not... It's on a timer. Definitely not. Yeah, it's it's like very, very consistent. And so you kind of can get a feel for when you're going to get a Venom ammo. It's like you, you get a feel for when, when to use it. Um, and then when you, when you pick the ammo up, it refills your mag and then gives you two shots in reserve. So if you pick it up with a full mag, you're only getting half the ammo. So... Yeah, you're wasting it. Yeah, because it... It either fills your mag or it doesn't. So if your mag's full, you lose those two shots. So you want to pick the ammo up with it at 0 slash 2 or 0 slash 0. Yeah, and then you get four bullets instead of two. Yeah. And if you have uh, if you have limited ammo, um, the, two, the 2 slash 2 goes down to 1 slash 1. So, you know, you, that one you just pick it up when your mag has at least one shot empty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's but, still good. It just has less ammo. Right, you gotta be a little more careful with it. Yeah, wanna... bummer to find out that all Phantoms uh, do the exact same thing. Mm. Like the Fire one and the Electric one are all copies of the the Phantom X. Just yeah. with a different skin. Pretty much. It's it just kinda, kinda bummer. But... Unless there's some minor difference, but I certainly have not noticed anything in all my testing. Yeah, there might be some, like, uh, area F of effect, maybe the height of the or something, but I think it's all pretty much the same. Yeah. And until that gets uh, <laughs> data mined, data mined. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm cool with saying that all of the Venom variants are just reswap or reskins. I kind of like the... Uh... Yeah, except... You got it. Except for the plant one on Nader, yeah. of course. That yeah. one shoots fucking plants. Uh, uh... Those plants are amazing, by the way. Really? You can keep them up like you can put four on the ground mm -hmm. and if you pick up venom ammo you get four shots back 
and the plants like stay for longer than it takes for ammo to drop so you can have four co plants constantly which is actually pretty good i need to try that i <laughs> i've probably used like actually used the sx maybe like five times ever <laughs> really <laughs> I it's, it's actually pretty decent those plants like yeah. kill a hunter is so fast mayday is like my least played map oh yeah for sure it's funny because mayday is like supposed to be you know the easiest one like uh, with yeah, regards so to like long. relics and turrets but i always get my ass kicked on mayday like s like the challenge <laughs> runs get so hard yeah there are some hard aliens and the cedars are no yeah, mercy the cedars are just crazy <laughs> in the lost area there's so many phantoms yeah it's that that third area like once you get inside as on you know if you're speaking of like uh like ultra hard ultra hardcore like the, the weird bonkers runs that aren't like intended to be done like once you get into that mm -hmm. last area it it it's like uh it's like you're playing an entirely different game <laughs> yeah the money drops the yeah. the alien starts spawning like the valve section is also so random Dude, you can yeah. have like uh, good RNG and it will only be scouts. Yeah, or you, you get can like have shit RNG and it will be fucking phantoms yeah, and phantoms as soon as you kill one, like a new one spawns. Yeah, and they just attack the valve as well. Usually, Normally whenever phantoms don't attack the drill, yeah. but they do attack the valves and they destroy it like quick. Yeah, whenever the it, it gives me phantoms and I'm doing like ultra hardcore, uh, I've noticed that once like a couple valves get taken out, it stops the phantoms. So I'll just like let him take a couple valves out and have like flare IMS oh, yeah. everything, yeah, and just to make sure Pretty I don't get enough. wiped by the the phantoms. Because like once you once they yeah. destroy it and you clear them out, then it's it's funny like the the kraken fight on like normal is the most boring thing ever, but then when you do it on oh yeah on like the the ultra hardcore or whatever, it gets so hard. <laughs> It's fucking like nightmare mode. Yeah, I hate the Kraken fight though. Worst boss <laughs> fight ever. Least favorite boss fight, <laughs> for sure. It's, it's just a loading screen. Right. <laughs> scroller. Yeah, it's an auto scroller. Auto scroller that's okay, randomized. Yeah, yeah, fucking hell, random, random attacks, random times. Speedrun is terrible. I still have to get that racket back, but it's gonna be so terrible. <laughs> okay, now we have the NX1, which uh, is also weird, <laughs> but it's an amazing gun. The DPS of the NX1 is insane. It's like almost as high as the Bulldog with infinite range and the regening ammo. So uh, I think people should use it a lot more than they do. Uh, the large shots, which you use against the Ancestor, also an insane amount of damage. But it takes 10 shots to fire one large shot. You can also do 10 small shots, uh, which the DPS is based on. And the small shots deal like 2,000 damage. And if you shoot it 10 times, it's 20,000 damage. This is four times more than a large shot. So those small shots should be used way more. You can two-shot a gargoyle and a phantom with it. And you can yeah. like four-shot a rhino, which is insane. Yeah, I this, the small shots are so slept on because... Well, the, the large shot, it you know, it does it does a lot of damage. It, I actually, I've never, I've never tested the large shot against like regular enemies. I've just tested it against the ancestor. You know, uh, the main the main yeah. purpose of it is the, the fact that it takes the ancestor's shield down. Yeah, yeah that's what it's made for, and it right. does that amazingly. But yeah, like it's like, uh, made to kill the ancestors easier because they are a big pain to deal with without an NX or an X nades. It's yeah, they're so ass without when they can bring the shield up. But yeah, like the, yeah. the small shots just against regular enemies is crazy. The, it's insane. The two-shot phantom is... This is like how I kill phantoms on Exodus. You just pull the disruptor out and... Pew, pew, done. Yeah, normally they have like uh, the same amount of health as a gargoyle. Half the health of a rhino, which is a lot. Yeah. And it just takes like 50 bullets to kill. And with the, with the, an axe, it's like... Bam, bam, and it's dead. Yeah. And it has a if you have like weapon specialist or team boosters, 
the NX's swap in time is like instant. So the handling is insanely fast. <laughs> yeah. as well. you can run with it as fast as you can with your pistol or an SMG. Like literally, you, you're just shooting like your normal gun. You see a phantom, it takes like a half second to just disruptor bang bang back. Like yeah, nice. it's really good. And then you can just let it regen ammo. And as soon as you get a feel for it, you can just take it out, shoot ten bullets or nine bullets because you don't want to deal with that uh, cooldown. Yeah, it's weird. And put it back, and then whenever you need it, take it on again. Yeah, when you when you shoot the tenth bullet, so not the big shot, but if you shoot all ten with the small shots, when you get to the last, uh, when you shoot the last one, you get locked in a three and a half second long cooldown animation, <laughs> and you can't do anything. But if you yeah. melee or pull out a grenade and cancel it, you can get out of that cooldown animation way faster. Yeah, that's a bit of tech. It's useful if you want to... I think that's cool for it later in miscellaneous. I, I think it is too, yeah. It's cool for, like, ancestor, like, combos. <laughs> yeah, if you use NX nades and the NX yeah. uh, shots, you can kill an ancestor super fast. You can also delete ancestors with mortars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like think... you do with the breeder. Yeah, that that's a little that that's the craziest shit. When you when you uh when you do Have you ever seen that? If you like spam mortars quick enough, the ancestor doesn't like even <clears throat> do his death yeah. animation anymore, it just gets deleted. Yeah, I've you can do the that with a bulldog. <laughs> you can do it? <laughs> Yeah, I've done it with a few. You gotta shoot him for a while, but once you get him down far enough, he just goes away. And then, um, the. Beautiful. Uh, you know, like the kill an ancestor in 180 seconds challenge? Mm -hmm. If you, um, <clears throat> if you delete him, like, fully, it finishes the challenge faster. <laughs> oh, sick. Because the challenge, the challenge, like, ends on. Wait, am I thinking of something else? I'm thinking of something else. Yeah, yeah, don't take damage for 180 seconds. There's, like... Oh, the flying aliens. That's what I'm thinking of. There's, there's a challenge that involves that. So the ancestor is a flying alien. And... Oh, really? Yeah, when, if, you, <laughs> if you fully delete him, like, the moment he disappears, he it comes. gives you a point for the, <laughs> the flying aliens nice. challenge. Yeah. That's beautiful. Okay, I think that covers the wonder weapons. They're yep. amazing. Uh, then we have some damage multipliers. This is where the uh, this is where the fun begins. <laughs> yeah. These are so damage multipliers are all over the place. I I've I've lost so much fucking hair over these multipliers. Okay, so uh, I'll just sorry, let's go down it. So the do less damage relic is a uh, uh, two thirds of your damage, right? So it takes thirty three percent off. It's just 0.66x multiplier, however you want to think about it. It's big. Yeah, it's a big debuff. Uh, it applies to most things, but we'll get to that. <laughs> um, yeah. This, uh, this 0.66, um, if you have, like, Weapon Specialist plus 4, that 50% damage boost exactly counters this. So you'd average out to 1, so that's kind of neat to know. Armor hit, yeah. talking about, like, a, you know, whenever you shoot an enemy and you get, like, the, the clink, and it pulls up the little, the little shield. Looks Everything. like that's about 50% damage. Then a critical hit on a normal e enemy is 50% extra damage. Somewhere in that ballpark, these numbers are kind of hard to test, and they might be a little different from enemy to enemy. But yeah, but it, it checks out. Yeah. Well, uh, one thing that I'm absolutely sure about is the Ancestor critical hit uh, with like a normal weapon is a 20% damage buff. But the, the interesting thing is that uh, different weapons get different multipliers, or maybe don't even get multipliers at all. For instance, I think with the snipers, they're getting a higher thing here, like 38%, 40%, just based on how much damage they yeah. deal to other enemies. Um, and then, you know, stuff like the death machine just doesn't get a multiplier at all. It's weird. <laughs> yeah, explosives in general don't get a multiplier, but uh, the death machine isn't even explosive. It's It's weird. It's it's weird. The only reason you really need to know that value is if you wanted to test weapons for yourself. So yeah, it made it only made the testing harder. Right. In in 
I guess in context, the only thing you need to know about that is the ancestor critical hit. Probably does. It's probably not as important as you think. Like, um, if yeah. shooting for the ancestor's head is gonna make you miss, like when you know he doesn't move much, but sometimes he like lynches and and does like a big animation that makes you miss a bunch of shots. It, it's it's better to just hit him anywhere than it is to miss. Yeah, for sure. Also, with the bulldog, if you're gonna miss pellets by shooting his head, it's better to just shoot his body. Yeah, just like point blank him right in the nuts. Easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's his height, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then we have the arc attachments. Fucking amazing. Oh, yeah. Uh, it buffs your gun by uh, like 33%, which is a yep. lot. It also. It can make your gun so much stronger. It also massively increases your range. Oh yeah, it's insane. I, uh, the uh, the numbers I've become found. so much better with it. Yeah, right. It's 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 a big deal. I know I've I've had people tell me that like like oh top level players would use a muzzle break instead of the arc for extra range. What? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what? <laughs> but yeah, Doesn't no. Makes sense. Our arc. Like, an MTS yeah. with an arc can like shoot scorpions so far away. It's, the arc yeah. makes it all. I, I noticed. That I did a, a UHC awakening run with the TAC-12, and um. Fuck. The, that sounds terrible. <laughs> the arc made it so much better than I expected. Like it had it had way more reach than you would think it would. Yeah, it does. Like yeah. insane. Yeah. So. 34%. Because I've used shotguns a lot in the speedruns, and I know the ranges, like, I know the, the feeling, and then you have an arc, and then you're like, whoa, yeah. I can hit everything now. Yeah, it's... And absolute... everything dies quicker as well. It's... There is almost no reason to ever not want an arc. I can think of one. Um, yeah, fucking the invisible barriers. Yeah, the arc fucks with invisible barriers, and the breeder is absolutely covered in invisible boxes. Um, <laughs> and also the arc multipliers yeah, so sometimes... Yeah, might to use it there. Yeah. Sometimes they just, like, don't apply to things. Like barrier hives. For so... they, they just don't apply to barrier hives. So that's yeah, why... special things that were introduced before the arc was introduced. So all the aliens that are in Awakening and Exodus are affected by the... The arc multiplier, so all the aliens that are in those maps and also mm. in the other maps are affected, but they just didn't bother to add it in for bosses like uh, the breeder and the oh, barrier yeah. highs. Probably also not the kraken. Yeah, you know, that's testable. Kind of impossible to test. But they they were just lazy with it. Like all this stuff that's in Awakening and Exodus, they added the multiplier on, but all the stuff that was in before that just didn't get the multiplier. Yeah. It's uh, it's it's Probably weird. Probably because they never planned to introduce Master Scavenger, so you were never supposed to have it on those maps. Yeah, right. That was at kind the start. Of late edition. Yeah, they just threw that in there in the last DLC. They went crazy with the Tita Brace in the last DLC. I'm so I'm so glad they did that the way they did. With yeah, like, it's uh, so fun. They double clock with the slay ammo. <laughs> Master they, Scav. At, at for the first couple months of the armory, you know, you would. The tooth earn system was entirely different. You'd get like four teeth a game, um, but also all the upgrades were way cheaper. And then, <clears throat> you know, later at the end of the game, you make it so you get like three to five times as many teeth per per game. Yeah. Uh, so all of those like base level upgrades are now super duper easy to get. You can get yourself started really quick. But and now you have like the huge stuff to save up for at the end. I, I like how they did that. Yeah, yeah, it's better. <laughs> when the uh, teeth upgrades were introduced, I was grinding my ass off to unlock starts with the locker key. It was like I... a big accomplishment when I looked at it. I I distinctly now it's like re... one game. Yeah, right. I I very very vividly remember grinding for an entire weekend to get a uh, hypno knife for rhino. Yeah, because that, that was took... expensive. I think it took me like twelve games. <laughs> yeah, it was stupid back then. And now you could do that in three easily. Two if you yeah, really easy. go crazy with it. And like, kill a bunch of extra aliens. So, anyway, Monster Scavenger allows you to find an arc on every map. 
uh, it's still amazing. It just doesn't work on Barrier Hives and Predefied and probably not also the Kraken. But always pick up an Arc. It's it's amazing. Yep. And we've some got reason all... the Arc pistol attachment that you get from the T upgrade is a bit <laughs> bugged, or maybe not. It it has a lower the... damage multiplier for some reason. Yeah, this is. It's just it's just twenty five percent for some reason. The um, in the game's code, the, there are three different types of pistol arcs. <laughs> there's like alien muzzle brake, uh, PI, then there's PA and P three, but they're all just twenty five percent damage. So it's you know, sadly it's yeah, not and then thirty four. Yeah, guns with uh, the good. pistols are still really good though. With yeah. yeah, the pistols are. And then we have the guns with an integrated suppressor that completely messes with the arc for some reason. Like the VKS, like the Honey Badger. Yeah, and the, the Honey Badger got taken out of the game just because it didn't work with the arc. Sad. Yeah. But Big sad. Amazing gun. Honey Badger couldn't take an arc. F56 can't take an extended max. It's fucking spaghetti code. <laughs> it's, the game is spaghetti code for real. Speaking of spaghetti code, this next one is weird. So the weapon specialist ability, you, the this is referring to the infinite ammo that you get by double tapping, you know, the class button. It it says it makes you deal more damage, but it actually makes you deal less damage. It's um yeah. It cuts 10% of your damage per shot off for some reason. I don't know why. It just does. At every single level, it does this. Um, I don't know if it affects your it says it gives you the teammates around you a massive damage buff. I haven't tested that at all. I doubt it works. Um, yeah, me. I don't trust it either. But that's not to say it's bad, because especially if you have a gun like... Uh, if you can use it to so. avoid a reload, this is going to increase your mm -hmm. damage, right? Like, you got a bulldog, this is crazy. Uh, if you have a chainsaw, like you said, and then... Right as you get to the bottom of the magazine, you hit the, the weapon specialist ability. So instead of reloading for four to eight seconds, you just keep shooting. It's Yeah, sometimes when I buy a chainsaw and I want to have like Crypto Slayer ammo in there, I just throw a box of Crypto Slayer ammo and instead of reloading, I just double tap the weapon specialist button to instantly reload for me just yeah. because it takes so long. Yeah, I mean, with the with the um, class upgrade frequency boost, the... Things come so fast. Yeah, it's every 30 seconds, right? A uh, minute 30. Every minute 30. Yeah, one minute okay. 30. So normally it's, it's three minutes. Yeah, normally it's three minutes, which is uh, okay. once a hive. And then the class upgrade frequency boost makes it twice a hive. And if you have double class, you can pop one off yeah. every 45 seconds. It's insane. Which is just you have a weapon specialist tank. Oh, no, wait, a medic tank you can be like invincible. It's like... If there was a quad class, you know, you could, I think yeah. you could pop one off, what, every, like, uh, 22 and a half seconds, so you could, you could almost, you could have them on for half of the game, <laughs> if there was, if there was a quad class. Yeah, so. it would be sick. And those, I would love to have quad class introduced for, like, 5k teeth. Yeah, no, absolutely, quad class would be, like, <laughs> the... Speedrun dream. 15 year anniversary, someone just comes back. It's like, alright, here you go. If this game ever gets more, that's, that's one of the things that would get put in. Yeah. Also, some bugs getting fixed. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's okay, then we have a. Uh... Well, speaking of those class abilities that we were talking about for a while, this is their, their durations over here on the right. Um, oh, yeah. They all last for. As you upgrade them, they, uh, they last longer. Until it doubles the entire duration. So they also, some of them also get like stronger as you upgrade them. Like the medic, the medic upgrade regens at a higher rate the more it's upgraded. Uh, but yeah, they're all this, this, um, these durations, and it doesn't matter whether it's your primary or secondary class. That was a myth. Maybe that was a thing that existed previously, but it doesn't exist now. Yeah. Yeah, it's been patched out. I think it was a thing back in the day. Yeah. Right. But yeah, just. Whatever you want for the class setup, they'll last this long. Yeah. Yep. You know, you have armor piercing ammo. Uh, if you have the T upgrade that uh, increases the potency of the armor piercing ammo, it uh, deals 1.1 times damage, but only if you hit armor hits. 
so the, you won't know you hit an armor because the yellow shields have been removed if you run armor piercing ammo but it will do more damage so it's actually better to hit armor than uh, the normal body of a cryptid but I'd always try to go for criticals because criticals deal way more damage so if you see a rhino still shoot in his head don't try to hit his armor because it do more damage just shoot his head or a scorpion or anything like that yeah scorpion's got a big critical hit spot yeah, it's easy to hit critical on it. Uh, then we have the T to upgrade for incendiary ammo, which is a big buff. Every pulse deals like 20 to 40 damage of the yeah. fire, which is pretty big. And with the buff, it uh, gets uh, with the T to upgrade, it gets a 1.2 uh, two times buff. So it becomes even stronger, go from like 30 to 60 damage. Yeah, and that, that only is great. That only applies to the pulses of fire damage. That's not affecting your yeah, yeah, yeah. the bullet itself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then we have the explosive ammo, which is uh, this is the reason explosive ammo is bad. Yep. <laughs> uh, it gets a one point one damage multiplier to all your bullets, but for some reason this multiplier overrides the weapon specialist uh, twenty percent damage boost at uh, that it always has, and the fifty percent damage boost at plus four. Uh, because of that, it's actually a damage decrease if you run Weapon Specialist. If you don't run Weapon Specialist, it's a pretty decent ammo type. Yeah. But I think Weapon Specialist is like uh, the meta right now. Everybody uses it. It's amazing. Yeah. It's... Uh, and because of that, Explosive Ammo is like bottom tier. Yep. The This also, this has been in the game since day one. I, I checked. Um... Which is interesting because the meta originally in like 2013 was explosive ammo, but the yeah it used to be big yeah it, it they nerfed the the damage that the explosion itself does by a lot it used to be cra it used to be like shooting frag grenades at everything and so people didn't even notice that it you know lost these buffs and um. Well, people started noticing that, like, explosive and, and Cryptid Slayer, because Cryptid Slayer is an explosive ammo, they started noticing it with shotguns back in, like, um, like 2014. There, once Cryptid Slayer ammo came out, there was a whole, a whole thing where people were like, like, ooh, I don't want to use Cryptid Slayer ammo because I want to use a bulldog, and it makes my shotguns bad because, you know, it, it makes them shoot slugs, and people thought the slugs do less damage. Yeah, yeah, but that's just it. That's what it does to every weapon. You just notice it more on a shotgun because when you pick up a bulldog, you're explicitly building your loadout to do as much DPS as possible. And so this. Yeah, and you will know if you get a one shot or a two shot. Yeah. It's really easy to notice. Yeah. You can't one shot a hunter anymore, certainly, or a, sc a scorpion. Yeah. My uh my video on this one, <laughs> I th I think a lot of people have maybe taken the 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 wrong. Uh, point away from that my my little meta my meta ironic clickbait thumbnail yeah, yeah. Uh, I th some people Much think that bait. when you put cryptid slayer ammo it literally cuts your damage down that's not true you're getting a damage buff it's just you're getting a smaller damage buff than you would if you weren't using it so if you don't run web special, it's not a problem at all. Yeah. If you do run web special, just don't upgrade it to plus four. Yeah. Because it doesn't do anything. You can see it as but like. It's a... still a super viable setup to run web specialist with uh, good slay ammo. It's, it's like the best yeah, it's, you can have. It's the best in like 95% of situations. Um, yeah, because it's for the... speed runs, if I need to deal a lot of damage, I don't use it. But otherwise, I would always use it. Yeah, it's like the only time that you would go with like incendiaries or armor piercing with a uh, you know weapon specialist is if you were explicitly building for the highest possible single target DPS um, yeah exactly which is what you do in speed runs because you need to kill one yeah, thing as fast as possible or berry lives. but anytime there's a crowd involved which is pretty much always an extinction yeah crypto slayer with with arcing stun and a plus three weapon specialist is just about as good as you can get. It's absolutely busted. Yeah. Like, the Arcane Stunt sets everything on fire. 
all the upgrades apply that like all these armor piercing and incendiary upgrades the arc instant upgrade that all applies to crypto slayer it's absolutely busted definitely against like groups you can see like six scouts you shoot one bullet they will all die yeah doesn't it's... matter what gun you have <laughs> and then you can yeah, think amazing. of the you can think of the not getting weapon specialist plus four as as a kind of buff on its own because yeah you don't need it so now you get your three skill points that you can put in some other thing yeah you can go armor or whatever yeah. ammo also uh last point engineer plus four. Oh boy <laughs> oh boy we did so much testing on this yeah and, uh, apparently engineer plus four doesn't do as much as we thought it did it does buff, uh, buff traps the traps get a big damage boost unfortunately tesla traps are not considered traps because they are craftable first uh for some reason it's coded to not be a trap but all the other traps fire traps electric traps they did do get the tra the multiplier so they are pretty decent uh the engine plus four also buffs explosive damage at least it says so in the code uh, with 1.5 times multiplier uh we tested uh all the explosives again and i think we'll talk about it later but apparently there's only a few explosives that actually get this buff and it's not what you think like we <laughs> i thought the mortis were buffed by it i thought the ims was buffed by it i uh, thought i i did a bunch of testing it was buffed by it the mass was buffed by it but apparently it's not the case uh, only a few things actually get buffed yeah, it's it's uh it's bad. I I did a bunch of testing previously, like in a previous iteration of the spreadsheet to try and determine it, and it was so weird. It seemed totally random, and then now what we're learning is that it doesn't apply to shit. Um, yeah. It doesn't apply to shit. It's <laughs> super hard to test because explosives hit uh, for example, mammoths have multiple hitboxes. Uh, and if you shoot an explosive, it hits multiple hitboxes. And so if you use an explosive on a mammoth, it will die quicker than a rhino for some reason. Because there's more hitboxes than a rhino would have. So it's impossible to test this. But, uh, but testing on barrier hives and breeders, uh, we figured out what gets the buff and what doesn't. Yeah. And it's uh, it's terrible. That will, I guess we'll save that reveal for later. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll have a whole sheet about it. Okay. <laughs> And then, um, yeah, okay, the, the last damage multiplier, these are uh, defensive, so this is affecting the damage that you take, not the damage you deal. So the Seeker Explosion Protection, super cheap tooth upgrade. I think it's five teeth, and this is big. I mean, it I cuts think... it cuts 25% of the Seeker damage off. I mean, that's awesome. Yeah, it's one of the only upgrades I took when I did a double class speedrun. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a... S tier upgrade, and then uh, yeah, I also I feel like oh yeah, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh yeah, yeah, and then the next one is uh the take more damage relic. I previously thought this was twenty percent uh extra damage that you take, but it's actually thirty three percent according to the code. And there's also a little thing in the code that's like like a like target priority increase. I think I think this might make enemies target you more. At least it says it tries to in the code. I have no idea if that works or what the effect is, but <laughs> I the it's it, like uh, it the tank. <laughs> yeah, right. It maybe it works. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> All right. Okay. Next page. How long have we been going for? Uh, we're about fifty-five minutes. Are we up? <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. We're we're front loading this a lot. We've talked about a lot of stuff. <laughs> oh shit. You on page five or fifty? We all talk <laughs> for an hour. Yeah, I, we've 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 talked about a lot of things that we're gonna cover <laughs> later in the spreadsheet. But yeah, this yeah, is gonna be exactly. long. This... Dude, this, I'm recording in 4K60. This video is gonna be like a hundred gigabytes. Oh man. Okay, gonna... next page I can we go over really quickly though. Okay. This is just the maps that you can fight every gun on. Yeah, so this... we have the the ARX. You can only find the Nightfall. It's been introduced in Nightfall with the Nightfall DLC and Mayday. Uh, and that goes for every gun. So SA805 is only a point. Same goes for the SC and the AK. And the Ripper is only on the last three maps. And I think the 
this whole sheet explains itself. Yeah, it's just it's just um the easiest way I could think of to tell you what maps which weapons are on. It's about it. We added yeah. in this version uh we added the launchers and the wonder weapons, but yeah, this is um yeah pretty self explanatory. Yeah, bottom right. Yeah. All right, next yeah, page. So I think you can go to the next page. So this is also uh, pretty self explanatory. Yeah, this was expanded a lot from the previous version. Previously, this was only top 10, and it didn't account for rapid fire. Um, now it does. So everything that's in that uh, we're using the rapid fire damage values for uh, is in bold here. And then you know, you've got all this is, is just ranking for the by DPS here. Yeah, just, so it's the top 24 guns based on the DPS. This is, there's a, oh, there's... yeah, the Bulligan first, MTS. And next one, the Scripter at number three, which is insane. Yeah, <laughs> I was thinking about putting the equalizer, like the MK32 and the grenade turret would be way up here. But I I, uh, I decided yeah. just to keep it to weapons that you could have in your, uh, like, normal rotation, you know? The Venom? Yeah. I, th I think the Venom would have made this list, but that DPS is different. It's not a, yeah. It's it's not a, like a within mag DPS like all these are. It's different. So there's no yeah. there's no new info on this page. It's just the first two pages but rearranged. Yeah, it's it's just a quick overview to see what what guns are theoretically the best yeah. to to deal damage. For me, it's really useful in speedruns, so I can see like, oh, this is the best gun I can get in this area for DPS yeah. for something. It tells you what maps. <laughs> That you have access yeah, to. Yeah, those tells me with maps. Yeah. Yeah. Really useful sheet. But uh, I think it's plain Excel, so you can go yep. over it. Uh, well, then we have the are. top 10s. Top 10s. So, uh, I guess I'll... the DPS. Yeah. Yeah, so the the top 24 guns by DPS. Of course, a Bulldog is not ideal for every situation. So, the Bulldog is not my favorite gun. So, we also made a top 10. For both of us, so then we talk about what which guns are actually more useful. Yeah, I guess I'll do a I'll do a quick uh, explanation for for these guns. Um, I yeah, put this ahead. list together like a couple months ago, so maybe my feelings have changed a little bit. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So I guess I guess my first one, my my personal favorite, not not necessarily based on its performance, but that's a big part of it. Um, so the first one, ARX with a extended mags. Uh, the extended mags is like necessary for this, in my opinion, or else you're you're always running out of ammo and you're reloading all the time. Um, it's I really like it uh, because of this crazy high full auto DPS. It's the high it's the highest full auto DPS in the game, which is pretty cool because with all the guns that are semi auto that have higher DPSs, you you aren't really hitting that maximum value most of the time so it's uh it, this thing just like consistently melts enemies it has good range performance as well um, i mean only downside is it's only available on nightfall and mayday it'd be kind of broken on the other maps uh, yeah i would love to have it on point or excelsis yeah the next one is the chainsaw um honestly like these top Go. yeah this i put x mags it's also insane with rapid fire um, but I've, for the challenge runs I've been doing recently, I feel like the extended mags is maybe a little more, a little better just because of the, the increased ammo, the decreased cost of buying ammo. Um, well, buying it, you don't have to buy it as often. You get more out of it when you do. Um, and then the less reloading I like, but yeah, the chainsaw is fantastic. It's avail it's available on every single map, which is really, really convenient. Um, yeah, just super duper mega solid gun. And it's also amazing for finding arc attachments. Yeah. The best gun to find arc attachments with. It's like also another reason why I absolutely love it. It's like several times better than than other guns for finding. Yeah. Stuff. And then uh, MR28 uh, also could be number one. Um, if you use Critter Slay ammo, MR28 goes up. Yeah, I I. I th I agree. That's so good. It one shots everything. Like one shot will kill an entire group. Um, obviously, extended mags. There's no rapid fire for it, but yeah, just the the. This is a very interesting gun. It's very different than it is in multiplayer. Just insane damage 
for for some reason they're like, yeah, let's just make this this gun that's available to you in the first area of point of contact, just like the literal best thing ever. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, okay, then this is this is really my only like controversial pick. Uh, on my top yeah, ten, no. everything else is good. It's the, the Maverick with rapid fire. Um, I, <laughs> I just like how it looks. Honestly, like the Maverick <laughs> <laughs> with a with an yeah, arc, I get what you mean. With an arc, a grip, uh, and the rapid fire, no sight. This thing looks sexy as fuck. Like the 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 iron sights, like the pole peaks up right through the arc, and you get the big wide ones. Um, and I mean, with you know, with rapid fire, it it does like an okay DPS. It's not like abysmal. Um, you got a good mag yeah. size. You got a good reserve ammo. It reloads really fast, so you just keep shooting it. You know. Yeah, and the rate of fire is still controllable. If you put like a rapid fire on the ARX, you get. Yeah. Like it's it becomes a bit uncontrollable, and you run out of ammo super quickly. But on the a gun with more bullets and less fire rate, it's a, a lot better to run rapid fire. Yeah, and so I'll like, uh, I I do like um, tooth grinds on Exodus because I'm just like, sometimes I'll 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 do that because I just want to get all the teeth upgrades like unlocked legitly on Steam, and I'll just use the Maverick for like with this setup. For like the whole game, and then when I get to the Medusa sequence, and it's like, oh, I actually need to like kill ancestors and rhinos. I'll just, I'll just buy the the chainsaw, just totally swap it out, yeah, so that I can actually kill things. But yeah, I really like this. Um, yeah. Also, uh, scouts, scorpions, hunters, they don't have too much HP. They all like three, four shot kills with most guns. Yeah, it doesn't really matter which gun you use, as long as you you like it, you're consistent with it. Only for like the big ass enemies, DPS is really nice. Yeah, right. And in a lot of those situations, you have like the venom or the disruptor that you can they can back you up. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then um. If you could play ammo, it doesn't matter what gun you use. Yeah, almost. They all, all just as go. long as you can shoot. Yeah. Then um. Okay, so I'll keep going. The K7. This is basically just the ARX, but available on the other two maps. Um, honestly, it could it could be way higher on my my list here too. You use extended mags with it, the same reason as the ARX. It's like only reason I would put it maybe below is because of its lower performance at range. I think it's a little harder to hit stuff far away, but it's it's really yeah, good. It's also like recall. a go-to weapon. Um, then yeah, Bulldog, insane DPS. I don't really build for it that much anymore. I feel like I feel like you gotta go with like the incendiaries and then just absolutely melt everything. But if you if you wanted to use it with Cryptid Slayer, it would not be nearly as bad as, as people think like C S shotguns are, you know? Yeah, it's it's so amazing. VKS speedrun champion. Um Yeah, it's it's uh, the only semi-auto sniper. You can put out some crazy DPS with it, but uh, it, it is a sniper rifle, and you got to use a scope, <laughs> you know? Yeah, unfortunate. It's really cool, though. It's it, If you use the VKS, it's, like, sexy as fuck. Cause you're just, like, all yeah. sniping on extinction and, like, taking this mammoth down. Uh, so you can kill some things so quickly with the VKS. Because the fire rate is actually ridiculous. Yeah, you can shoot that thing so fast. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. Then, uh, then the SA805. This is just the ARX number three. Um, it's available on point of contact. So I mean, you have you have the SA on point of contact, the K7 on Awakening Exodus, and the ARX on Nightfall and Mayday. So there's like this type of like, uh, like high fire rate, but also high damage gun is available on every map. It's just split up between these three. Um, yeah. The vector <laughs> kind of feels like... Uh, I guess it's a, it's a little bit different. It's it's kind of like a middle ground where it, it hits hard, but it doesn't shoot, like, super fast either. I guess it kind of feels like the... something like a Maverick in that regard. But... It just feels really yeah. solid, you know. It's easy to hit, hit stuff. Um, yeah, I, 
in my opinion, the vector is like really consistent because yeah. the reload is like fastest in the game. So if it, if you're running crit slay ammo, it's just nice to put out bullets. So everything gets on fire. Everything is being electrocuted. Uh, everything dies slowly, and with the fact that you can just consistently put out bullets, damage everything, make sure that nothing touches the drill. Like with the chainsaw, the downside is of course a big as reload time. Yeah. So sometimes you have some downtime. But with the fact that you can always shoot. Right. Yeah, consistent's a good word for it. And then uh, yeah. so the M27 with rapid fire. This is another like uh, I I was kind of debating like I can throw some other like a, like a stock. SMG or an AR or, or something in here, but I went with this one because it's very uh, it's very different. You know, it's only available on point of contact. It's it's we'll get to this later, but it's one of the weapons that um, has like a a higher overall DPS when you use rapid fire, which is weird. There's only like three of them that do that. Um, it looks cool, and it's it's pretty solid as well. I mean, it you know it's uh, it's an LMG with like a fast reload time. Which is pretty pretty interesting, you know. So I, that's a yeah. That's my top ten. What you got? Yeah, the reload time is amazing for the M27. Yeah. Okay. Let me have my top ten. I'm gonna go over it pretty quickly because I think yeah. uh, I have mostly the same guns, and I think uh, strong points of the guns have already been uh, mentioned. Okay. But uh, I'm going with the chainsaw rapid fire actually. Uh, the rapid fire just makes it so stupidly strong and there is so many ways to skip the reload so for example yeah. in my exodus speedrun i need to spawn trap a fuck ton of rhinos and with a chainsaw with crit to slay ammo uh plus three i can melt rhinos uh throw down crit to slay ammo instant reload and keep melting rhinos and i love that it's so nice yeah uh, i can also use weapon specialist to instantly reload the chainsaw but uh, if you go more casual, it's not the best gun because the reload time is extremely long. But uh, if you know how to avoid your reloads, uh, if you just want stupid DPS, the chainsaw is, is my go-to. Yep. Uh, then we have like the, the three guns Eric mentioned, the K7, the ARX, and the SA. It's all basically the same gun, but on a different map. The K7 is a bit different because it has a... Uh, it's SMG, so you have a bit higher movement speed, a bit more recoil, but it's, it's amazing. So that's why I put it on the top, because I like the movement speed. I like running and jumping around, because I'm that speed runner, I guess. ARX, amazing. SOA, I'm going to put below the ARX, because it has a slightly lower reload speed, slightly lower damage, but still a really good gun. Uh, then we have the MR28. MR28 with crit to slay, MR is probably the most insane gun ever. Uh, people use it in 8 Relic runs just because it's so good. So we have the Vector. Vector is really consistent. Uh, if you have Crutus Slay ammo, you can just shoot everything, make sure everything's on fire. Uh, it's really easy to crack the drill with. Uh, if you play a high score game, you're going to support someone. Uh, it's what you would use probably, just because you can always shoot when you need to. Uh, uh, which is Vector Drill. You don't want to be in a reload when you see Hunter approaching the drill. Uh, then I have a, a DMR, uh, the EA-2. For some reason, this gun just feels really nice. I don't know why. Yeah. I like the fire guns. Uh, I always have. And I don't know. I, I just love using it. It's not the best DPS-wise, but it's pretty decent. Definitely if you get the fire rate going. Um... Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. No, I just a, put it on there. That's that's a good one. A good like, yeah, uh, my my top se ten changes. Secret pick. Yeah, 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 underrated gun for sure. Yeah, it's all guns in extinction are really balanced. Like I have a different gun I want to use every day, I guess. Yeah, it's so. It's, so, to... it's so different in zombies from zombies in that regard, where like everything works. It, it's. It's not like you have like the zombies like 1911 starting pistol that's just literally unusable, you know? Yeah, exactly. There's nothing trash. Everything is balanced in some way. Like more damage, more ammo, uh, more control. The only real shit guns are like the snipers and the tech 12. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the launchers. The launchers. Just are don't ass. use those, and you will be good. <laughs> 
Uh, then I have my my three uh, DPS guns. Yeah. The Bulldog, the MTS, and the VKS, which I use in speedruns just because the DPS potential is so stupid. With the Bulldog, you can melt those barrier hives, you can melt mammoths, you can melt rhinos. Like, you you can spawn trap rhinos. Before they even like spawn, you can kill them with the Bulldog and the MTS, which is lovely. Uh, VKS, uh, Sniper also gives uh, bonus money because of the teeth upgrade, which is nice. And if you you know how to handle it, it can be so good. So I had to put it in my top 10. Yeah. And I think that about yep. covers it. Go on to page 9. <laughs> page 9 out of 50. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, this is new. This is, um... So th this, at first, is going to be like an overwhelming amount of information, but what we've got here is a comparison uh, between rapid fire and extended mags for every single weapon that can take both. So, the damage values are just from further up in the spreadsheet. Fire rate, same. Further further up spreadsheet, the within mag DPS, these are the damage values that we've already seen. Um, and the, the color code here yeah. is just um, green means rapid fire wins, and blue means extended mags wins, and then this red is just sleight of hand. Uh, so then here's how much yeah. ammo the guns have. Again, we've seen this before. And then this is new. So the total damage. This is the amount of damage, uh, the maximum amount of damage you can do by emptying a full mag of this. So, uh, and all of the stuff, all the damages so far, we're, we're not talking about. Uh, these don't have any damage multipliers. It's just the base damage of the gun, right? So obviously, you know, your extended mags is doing 50% more total damage every time. Then here's the reload times, and we need this to calculate the overall DPS. Uh, the reload times, I'm assuming we're going from a fully empty mag, so you have like the extra like, bolt release animation, you know? And then the sleight of hand is just twice as fast. And then here's where the, here's where the magic happens, the overall DPS. So what this is, is the total damage of, that the weapon can do in one mag divided by the amount of time it takes you to shoot that mag and reload another one. It's the same way as I calculated the Venom's damage. And so, despite Rapid Fire being a 17% buff to fire rate, and therefore a 17% buff to the damage you do, DPS you do within a mag, if you have to reload uh, and you don't have sleight of hand, then Extended Mags has a higher DPS on every single gun. Just because you're reloading so much less. Um, now, granted, most enemies are going to die within a mag, but also you are going to be just continuously shooting new enemies. So this 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 is more relevant than than you might think. But then something yeah, interesting... Yeah, there are some ways to avoid a reload, but yeah. most of the time you're just going to have to reload after, the, after every mag. Yeah, unless you've, you've got, like, weapon specialist um, ability or... Um, the, the ammo, ammo box, box or like a, like a rapid fire and extended mags conveniently on the ground for you to swap between. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, if you don't have sleight of hand, extended mags is probably your way to go in in most circumstances. <clears throat> but something interesting yeah, happens. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. When you, uh, when you have sleight of hand. So, sleight of hand, you know, is massively increase, or decreasing your reload time. Uh, and when you factor that in, these overall DPS numbers become a lot closer for most weapons. Like, a lot of these are only 10 to 30 DPS apart, which is, like, not noticeable at all. And there's three cases where the rapid fire is actually dealing more damage over time than the extended mags is. Like, the, the fire rate buff, uh, or the the whole not reloading thing is, is beat out by the fire rate buff on the Maverick, the R5, in the M27, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> um, yeah, these are also the guns with already very fast reloads. So, yes. Uh, yeah, these are. If yeah, if you were to look at what these the... guns are, is they are low. They are slower fire rate, big mag, uh, fast reload. So they're already set up to just almost be con shooting continuously, anyways. Yeah. 
Yep. So that's what this page is. Extended mags is usually better in most circumstances, but uh, there are a couple situations where you might want rapid fire instead. It's the takeaway here. Yeah. It's also really nice to just see all the reload speeds of uh, the guns. Yeah, because we didn't. If have you go to this so. link, uh, you can see all the reload speeds of literally all guns. Here we only have the weapons that can take rapid fire. But if you want to see the reload of the VGS, MR, uh, anything, Bulldog, you can go to this link and it'll bring you to the the place where we pulled the data from. Yeah, and um, this is this is simplified, right? This is only the empty mag reloads. Um, that's the you know like the the best case for measuring overall DPS because if you're reloading off of a off of a not finished mag, then you know these numbers would be different. It's complicated. And also there'd be like infinitely many scenarios. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, this is like the best. Then case. it could be here forever. Yeah, so very uh, this is yeah. kind, of, kind of a a a fun exercise to do. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay, so yeah. enemy HP. Next place? Yep. Enemy HP, yes. You want to do this one or should uh, I? <laughs> yeah, we, we covered it at page one. Uh, yeah. The, but guess... it was only a few enemies. And now we're going to cover like every health bar. So here's the normal enemies that you have. But we also cover like random stuff like the breeder, uh, breeder healing pot. Identical, that kind of stuff. The um, what we have also on here is the damage that they do to you. Oh yeah. We didn't have that That's at really all important. in the uh in the beginning, and as well as the cash that you get from killing one of these guys. A an important thing to note about the damage values here, they're uh they're slightly randomized from hit to hit, which made it really difficult to test these things. But luckily, uh, most of these or all the ones that you see with like a range here are numbers that I pulled out of the the data mine. Um. It's like a, it's, yeah. I don't know if we have any Pokemon So what does it mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a high roll and a low roll. Yeah, that's what it is. So basically what it means, if you get hit by a scout twice, you can get take different amounts of damage. And It's just crazy. I think the, the biggest uh, example, or the, the, the most uh, consequential one, is the Phantom. Uh, because the, his range... Uh, the 33 and 34, <laughs> if you get all 33s, you'd have one HP left, but if you take even a single 34, he'll three-shot you. Yeah, Phantom's so, gonna be scary. Yeah, especially if they get glitched, and they're supposed to hit you twice and run away so that you don't get insta-killed mm -hmm. by them, but if if he gets stuck on something... You could just hit you yeah, four times. Yeah, or he hits you, and you stun him with Crypto Slayer ammo, sometimes he hits you again. Yeah. So. Yeah. They're, it's gonna be bad. They're silly. <laughs> then, um... But yeah, damage values, so you know how much damage you take. Uh, of course, armor uh, helps, like, reduce this damage. Instead of you taking the damage, armor will take this damage. But, uh... Yeah, some damage values might surprise you, like a Scorpion... Big shot does 40 damage. It's huge. Uh, it's it's a big amount of damage, and then it also leaves gas, which deals five damage a second or pulse. Yeah. And scorpions can be scary. Uh, anything that explodes has a big damage range. If like really far away from the explosion, you take one damage from a seeker or a ten. If you're close to it, you take 40, which is a big chunk. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of these values you. You might not uh you might not expect like the seeker meteor does hundred fifteen if you get hit by it. Yeah. <laughs> like if he lands hit. on top of you, yeah. you die really fast. <laughs> but you can survive it if you're a if you're if you're a tank. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then this has killed me a lot of times in point of combat speedruns. Most of the stuff here hasn't changed. Um the I did add this little thing down here for the drill damage per second. So this is uh when a scout or a hunter is riding the drill. Like just one enemy on it, um, the scout does one damage a second. The hunter does two and a half in solo, and then in co-op, uh, doesn't matter how many players are in, just co-op, um, these numbers go up a bit to 175 and four. This this one damage yeah. per second from a scout is kind of interesting because um, if 
you can get a. This is only really relevant for like stupid challenge runs, like like ten relic thing. Um, if you can get a scout on the drill, uh, if the hive is short enough, you might only need to repair the drill one time, and this but the scout won't be able to kill it fast enough. Yeah. So in some cases, it's better to just let the scout hit the drill than risk a hunter getting on the drill because a hunter can delete the drill so yeah, fast. So much faster. And then uh, yeah. the, these HP multipliers uh, only apply to like the regular enemies. The bosses are weird. Um, yeah, they're yeah, special. We'll, we'll get to those later. Yeah, we have a whole boss section later. Yeah. Okay. All right. Page 10. Let's go. Page I'll, do the, I'll cover the HP regen. You get the searching. So yeah, you you, you figured this out. I I uh, this was tough. This took a massive strain on my well being. Um, so the HP regen is weird, like everything else. Um, it's kind of split into two different parts. I call them continuous and pulse healing. Uh, so the continuous healing is, you know, you get hit a bunch, and then uh, there's there's this delay. Of, of three seconds by default, where you're just waiting for your health to start regening, and if you get hit before this delay is up, it resets the delay, right? And then once that de delay is uh, is gone, you start regening at you know this rate, 2.87 HP per second. Doesn't really matter what the number is. Um, what do matter are these multipliers. So if you have the um, HP regen armory upgrade. Uh, it goes up by 17%. It's like rapid fire. Uh, it's like rapid fire for your health regen. Then Ferals makes nice. it 40%, so it's a lot faster. And Ferals also um, cuts the, the delay Ferals down quite a bit. Which is... Yeah, Ferals plus 2 or higher, I'll do this. It, it cuts the initial delay down, so you start healing quicker. And then the Fragile Relic um, is a 0.64x multiplier it's kind of random but that's what it is and it also massively increases the amount of time you have to wait for your health to start regening um that's all pretty simple uh on the surface it gets weird when you try to combine them <laughs> so there's kind of yeah, a hierarchy combine. here they just stack i guess they they don't they just get rid of each other right so there's a hierarchy here oh are you still looking at uh, fragile i thought yeah. you were thinking about medic yeah, yeah. Or well, I'm actually I'm looking at the the notes. Um, so, oh, oh yeah, fine. So the the yeah, yeah. the HP, uh, the armory upgrade is on the bottom. Then Ferals is above it. Then Fragiles is above all of them. So they don't they don't combine at all. So the the multiplier, the 17% from the armory upgrade gets killed by Ferals, and you only have a you only get the Ferals, uh, multiplier. And then when you have fragile, you only get the fragile multiplier. It doesn't matter if you have ferals or the the armory upgrade. It's just the fragile multiplier, which is fun. It's like uh, it's like stand your ground. How ferals ferals beats stand your ground for movement speed. Fragile beats ferals for health regen. It's weird. Um. Yeah. And then yeah. A note about fragile is when you sprint with fragile. Uh, it pauses your health regen, but it doesn't reset it. It's like once you stop sprinting, your health will immediately start regenerating, assuming you haven't taken damage, right? Um, now the pulse healing, this is more like an additive thing. This isn't multiplying your health regen at all. It's like stacking onto it as well. So yeah. the when you upgrade your medic to plus two, uh, it gives you little chunks of health at a time. That's the pulse. It's you get 5 HP per pulse uh, at so 0 0.5 pulse per second. This means that you get one of these every two seconds, right? And so that translates into this this HP re regen rate. And it's like it like doubles your, your base regen, but it's absolutely nothing compared to what the medic ability does. Um, the medic ability is crazy good uh, when you upgrade it. So it starts out only giving you 12 per pulse, and it gives you two pulses per second. Not one, not a pulse per two seconds, two pulses per second. Um, so you get this crazy HP regenerate, and as you upgrade it, it uh, it lasts for longer, and it's giving you health faster. So you're like almost unkillable with it at plus four. Um, yeah. 
these are unless you like instantly explode then you're yeah. really good unless you if you have like like three mammoths on you you can't take it but i mean pretty any much yeah. pretty much any normal circumstance this makes you basically invincible um these these values are not affected at all by anything over here um which is convenient also the um yeah when you you know with the fragile sprinting it pauses the the medic plus two regen it does not pause the uh medic ability so that keeps going and then um yeah here's here's the fastest possible hp regenerate you fill your entire health bar in two seconds uh, and then on the opposite side of that if you have uh fragile and uh like a maxed out tank which might happen uh, for like the ten relic half mortal setup, you know, <laughs> it takes the entire hive to heal yourself, assuming you don't get hit ever, which is a little crazy. Yeah, it takes forever. <laughs> but yeah, that's the uh, that's the health regen section. It was not fun to test. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I will do the searching. I uh, tested that a while ago now, when I made that video about. Uh, how to get more arc attachments. Uh, but what I found out is that each box has a 1 in 3 chance to be an attachment. And you can only find attachments that are valid for your weapon that you're currently holding. Um, the only exception to this is weapons that can only take an arc or an extend max, like uh, snipers and pistols. Uh, for some reason, or at the start of the game, extend max and arcs weren't programmed in the game. So those guns were programmed to find any attachment. Uh, but all the other guns can only find attachments that they can actually equip. So uh, if you search with a gun out, uh, that can search for less attachments, you have a higher chance of finding the ones you want. So for example, if you have a chainsaw, which can only find uh, four attachments, the uh, rapid fire, muzzle brake, arc, and... Uh, Max, you have a 1 in 12 chance uh, to find an arc attachment because it's a 1 in 3 that your search box is an attachment and then you have 4 different attachments that you can get so every search every box you search with an arc, uh, with a chainsaw in your hand you have a 1 in 12 chance of finding an arc which is pretty decent in comparison with an AR or a sniper or a pistol uh, with those guns you can find every attachment in the game which is like eight different attachments so or even nine i think it's nine <laughs> and your yeah. chances yeah there's three different scopes there is the burst fire there's so many attachments and your chances drop significantly to a one in 27. uh so if you really want to find the arc attachment i recommend choosing with a chainsaw or a ripper or a shotgun i made a whole video about it covering like every gun and what attachment every gun can have and what guns are best for searching. Uh, arc attachments are really good, uh, so are extend max. Uh, so actually changing the gun that you search with might be helpful in the game. Which is also a reason why chainsaw is... Uh, I, I like the chainsaw so much. Yeah, that's a... Because I often need extend max or rapid fires or arcs in my runs, in my speed runs. And chainsaw just helps getting me those. Yeah, that's a really good reason to have it at the top of your list. This this video is is really good. Like this um this whole search the chainsaw arc searching had it was kind of a like a myth for for a long time. And there's like one guy that, yeah. that tested it, but I think he only tested like one game. Um yeah, this yeah, this video is like is like the first like legit actual like research into this and it's huge. I played so many games and I searched <laughs> so many boxes every game. You don't want to know. I had like a whole uh, notebook full of, of uh, how do you call it? Uh, like stripes. Oh, yeah. Every time I found an arc, I would put one stripe. Every time I searched a box, I would put a stripe down. Uh, it, was, it was like crazy work. <laughs> yeah, I there was, a, there was a point when I wanted to try to like find like get the entire search box like distribution and my plan was to search mm -hmm. up like 2000 boxes but i would have gotten me nowhere cuz it's so it's so weird <laughs> this is this is like the one thing that matters 
from searching is finding arcs. Yeah. Exactly. Search with the chance. I mean, I guess like flares too, but there's nothing new about that. Yeah, if you want a flare or a trophy system or uh, hyper knives or those kind of things, just search before you buy a gun. Mm, then you yeah. have no attachments at all. As soon as you buy a gun, you get attachments. So for some reason, if you do like a challenge run and you need flares or hyper knives or trophies, search first, then buy a gun, and then get attachments. Most of the times you can get a gun a bit. <laughs> Uh, most attachments equipped already, except for an arc from the locker. So, yeah, you might want to use that. Yeah. All right, on to okay. movement speed. Movement speed. So, this is another one. This one's been around for a while. Um, I reformatted yeah. it. I redid a lot of this because a lot more information came out. Um, and I added the weapon speed multipliers as well. So, <clears throat> to go over this... Um, it's kind of like the health regen in that some of these multipliers cancel each other out. So by default, let's say you move at one. You move at one unit per unit distance per unit time, right? It's some it's some number, but all that matters is that your this is your default. Medic plus one makes it uh six percent faster, medic plus four makes it twelve percent faster. These numbers are straight out of the code. I used to not have um I used to have a whole thing here about like sprint or, or sprint multiplier because that's like what I was measuring but I was just the these are very slight changes and it's kind of hard to pick that up with a with like a smartphone timer and the recording um, yeah. yeah so these are these are those multipliers stand your ground relic uh, is a 0.7x multiplier so it cuts you down slower than any weapon you can hold uh, wood and then uh, barrels is a it's a 20% speed boost. Um, it's weird. Notice it's in orange. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, okay. This it is honestly cancels everything out. Yeah, this is honestly easier than the health regen. When you throw ferals, everything you had here in this box, the base movement speed, goes away. It dies. It becomes 1.2 until the ferals runs out. So, ferals just kills every other multiplier. Um, yeah. And I have with I ferals, have, you're really fast. Yeah, you're really really fast. I have some examples of that here. Um, well, actually, hold on. Let me. <laughs> I, there's two. There's two components to movement speed. There's your base movement speed, uh, which is just affecting. It's your it's your base movement speed, right? That's self-explanatory. Yeah. And then the weapon is whatever gun you're currently holding at the time. Is it a multiplier that goes on top of your base movement speed? It multiplies it, right? So. If you have your pistol upgraded to plus one, it's a 10% speed buff times whatever your base movement speed is, right? Whether your base movement speed is some combination of these guys, or if your base movement speed is from ferals, it's 1.1 you know, times that. And so, this is the list of all the movement speeds. Um, when you get to like the riot shield and the death machine, when you upgrade them, you get movement speed buffs, and so those are accounted for here as well. And then here's some examples on uh, in this middle table here of of how this arithmetic works with the ferals canceling everything out, right? And so, like for example, if you have medic four and stand your ground and ferals uh, activated, you only get ferals. It doesn't matter that you have everything else; it's just ferals. Um, but if you have you know uh, ferals and your pistol, that weapon speed multiplier does apply still, right? Um, oh yeah, then you have the maximum speed you can have. This is the highest you can go, it's 1.32. Um, yeah, yeah, and then uh, sprint duration, default lasts 4 seconds, uh, and then once that's up, it it, re it recharges for 4 seconds to get back to you know having 4 seconds of sprint you can spend. Any of the upgrades, yeah. uh, increase that to 8 seconds, and these don't stack at all. Um, and there, you want to talk about the IMS sprint? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, uh, default uh, sprint speed with any gun is 4 seconds, or sprint duration. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you have no gun in your hand, or a combat knife, but the combat knife is not an extension, it's only multiplayer. But if you would have the combat knife or no gun in your hand, your sprint duration is actually 7 seconds instead of 4. Um, in extension, you can trick the game into thinking you have no gun in your hand, by holding an IMS or a unbought uh, turret, 
it has to be unbought if you actually bought the IMS and pick it up. It doesn't work. It has to be like pulled out so you can buy it, but you don't actually buy it. But the game thinks you have no gun in your hand and it will increase the sprint duration to seven seconds. And if you have fouls, you can double this sprint duration just like it would normally do to 14 seconds. And 14 seconds of sprint is a lot of sprint. Yeah. <laughs> you can sprint for a while. <laughs> uh, the thing is that you also need to not sprint for 14 seconds to actually sprint for 14 seconds. It has to it has to so, charge up. Yeah, the cooldown is as long as your sprint is. So if you want to sprint for 8 seconds with just ferals, you wait for 8 seconds and then sprint for 8 seconds. So if you want to sprint for 14 seconds, you also have to wait 14 seconds. So that's unfortunate. Because otherwise we'd be pretty busted. But I do use it in some speedruns. Yeah. Yeah, that... There's a video explaining it really good. It's it makes a lot of sense when you watch it happen. Yeah, just watch this video. Wait, uh, yeah, this video. It's uh, damn, I can't select it. Yeah, this one. Uh, one of my speed wins, but I use it to skip like a meteor. I just completely run and I need it, which is insane. Yep, and um. So the uh, the sprint speed is 35% faster than your default movement speed, right? Uh, and then, yeah. Like, um, yeah, I mentioned that you can't extend your sprint duration by combining these. There's one more uh, important thing to know here, uh, really only if you're doing a speed run. It's that the drill speed is the same. The drill's movement speed is the same as whatever weapon you had in your hands while you picked it up. So it's whatever, you know, which one of these numbers you had. With one exception, unfortunately, the uh, the pistol's 10% speed buff uh, is it's like tied to having that weapon specifically out. Um, so when you put the when you pick up a drill, this 10% speed buff for the pistol goes away and, and just becomes like a pistol normal, like a plus zero, um, which is why in speed runs you see people not getting like the pistol upgrade. Uh, even though it seems like you would want it, because it doesn't actually help yeah. when you have the drill. I I do always get it because I think when you just pick up the drill, you have That's that true. increase for like until it's. So I do always get it, but it doesn't matter that much. Yeah, yeah. There, there's there's some weird stuff with like picking the drill up and putting it down. Yeah. Okay, I think that's good for movement yeah. speed. All right, you want to take yeah, the teeth? Let's do the teeth. I will do the teeth. I figured this whole thing out. But for this, I also did a lot of testing. So this is set in stone now. It's uh, this is how it works. It. So if you complete any map, uh, you get five teeth. Except for Exodus, for some reason, you get six teeth. Um, in Exodus, there's also ancestors, and if you kill all the ancestors in the game, you get an extra teeth. So. Exodus is theoretically the best map to grind teeth on. Uh, play on hardcore, increase the teeth you get when you complete the mission with three. Uh, very basic. Uh, relics, uh, you get one teeth extra for completion with a relic. So if you run one relic, you get one extra teeth. If you run three relics, you get three extra teeth. But three relics is the maximum amount of teeth you can run to get extra teeth from. So if you run 10 relics, you still only get three extra teeth. Uh, if you complete 10 challenges in a match, you will immediately get two teeth. You can see that pop up in your game as well, like, oh, you found two teeth. Uh, so always start to do all the challenges. Uh, because the next one, if you fail zero challenges in a match, you get the completionist, which is four extra teeth. So Always go for the challenges, it rewards you 6 extra teeth, uh, it's really a lot, because you can only 6 for completion, so you can double it just with doing all the challenges. Um, yeah, then killing all the ancestors in Exodus, I talked about it there, but it uh, gives you an extra teeth. So during the Medusa fight, make sure to wait for all 3 ancestors to spawn and kill them, so you get this extra teeth, it's only like a few seconds extra waiting. I think I'm one of the only persons that can even yeah. Uh, finish the Medusa fight before the third answers the spawn. So I don't even need to mention this. Does uh, <laughs> does this mean you have to kill all five, like the two throughout the game, or just the three at the end? 
Um, it's very rare that you don't kill the other two, honestly. But I guess yeah, why, why wouldn't you kill the other? Right. I don't I think you didn't kill the, the last three, though. Yeah. But I'm not sure. We just kill all of them, to be sure. Yeah, you're going to get this every single uh, time then, you play it. <laughs> yeah, you can't miss this one. You have to you try. You also immediately get it, even if you die. You like immediately get it in your match. Yeah. Uh, then you have 300 kills. So every 300 kills, you get a extra teeth. Um, this is what we use in the AFK teeth farm to grind teeth. But we'll get it later. Uh, in a normal game, you make about 600 kills, so you get two teeth from uh, kills. Bonus pool every 24 hours. The bonus pool resets. Uh, if you complete the first area in a game, you get an extra teeth. Every time you prestige, you get a teeth. And if you help someone complete the map for the first time, you also get a teeth. Also, if you complete yourself for the first time, you get an extra teeth. So, if you do a Exodus run, uh, which gives you 6 teeth, you run Hardcore, you get 9 teeth. You run 3 Relics, 12 teeth. Complete all challenges, 14 teeth. Fill 0 challenges, so you get a Completionist, you have 16 teeth. You kill all the Ancestors, 18. 17. 18 miscounted. Uh, killing all the ancestors gets you 18. Uh, that takes you to 19. 19. And then yeah. you get about 600 kills. So you get 21 teeth a game, which is an absurd amount. <laughs> uh, I have. I can do this super consistently. I did this for 24 hours, just running Exodus, grinding teeth. And I think I got 700 teeth in 24 hours. Yeah. I have. Uh, I've been, when I mentioned uh, way earlier, I, I was doing the Exodus, like, tooth grind on Steam, I've been keeping track of it. Like, I have a very detailed spreadsheet, like, keeping all this, uh, track of all this stuff. And so, <clears throat> these are, like, my current stats of, like, so I've recorded 68 games, then 91.2% of them are completionists. So I'm saying, like, 37 minutes average, and so that's, like, like you said, 21 teeth, I'm averaging 20.8 a game, uh, the highest games will be like 24 if everything lines up with like a prestige and the bonus yeah, pool and everything. Bonus hitting. Pool and prestige. Yeah, so 20.8 teeth per game, and then that's that's you know 34 teeth an hour, which is pretty good. Yeah, that's really good. <laughs> uh, also, you get uh, a teeth if you reach level 2, 6, 11, and 21 for the first time, which is only important if you're like brand new to the yeah, game. Yeah, that's, that's, wanna... that's when you're prestige zero. That doesn't keep happening. Yeah, exactly. So it's only if you make a new account. Uh, so yeah, the fastest way is speed when Exodus. Uh, <laughs> I made a video about it. It's a pretty good video. Uh, what you can also do if <laughs> if you have friends that are almost completing a game in Cope, you can join them and do the escape, and you will get the mission complete teeth. And if it's hardcore, you will also get the hardcore teeth. You don't get Relic Teeth, you don't get Challenge Teeth, but you do get the Completion Teeth. So, if you join a game and they are playing uh, Hardcore and they have a Completionist, you can get like 12 Teeth by just doing the Escape with them. Uh, which is theoretically really fast, but of course you need friends to play Extinction, which is really <laughs> rare these days. Yeah, it's... Uh... You gotta choreograph that shit, but if you really, really, really wanted to, you could get, like, hundreds of teeth an hour with this. Yeah, but it's almost it, impossible it, because you need a, a be, lot of friends. To it would be it impossible up. to set that up, like, on that scale. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then we have the AFK Tooth Farm. Uh, with a bunch of glitches, it's possible to create an infinite grenade turret. Uh, this infinite grenade turret can be picked up by a teammate, and then it will never disappear. It will never time out. Yeah, normally it lasts. And if you rubber band your controller, you can shoot indefinitely. So you can put it on during the night, and as you might know, if you don't plan to drill in the next hive, aliens will start to spawn, and those aliens will die by the grenade turret that's aimed at like your feet. Uh, it is slow, but it does give 40 teeth an hour. So if you leave it on for a night, you get about 50 teeth. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's it's not meant to be your, like, uh, it, I'm in absolutely no way do I claim this is the the best way to earn teeth. Um, 
it's, no, it's, it's crazy really slow. slow. It's meant to be like a like a, a thing you do on the side, right? Because the, the game is 10 years old. We don't need to expect everyone to drop like the 300 hours it takes of grinding to get uh, like double class. Yeah, so, it does take a stupid amount of time. Like you, you know, you you want you want to try out double class. You want to try out cryptid slayer ammo. Just let this thing run for like a week, two weeks, and there you go. You got it. You, you while you're at work, while you're at school, while you're doing whatever, you can just have this thing running in the background. Um, you'll get you'll be able to unlock all those armory upgrades. Um, caveat warning, whatever. I would recommend you reset the farm once a day if you're doing one of those big extended grinds. Like, let it run for, um, I don't know, maybe, maybe let it run for 23 hours, then then end the match, turn your turn your console off, let it cool down, start it back up again, just so that, um, well, like one, you're not like ruining your your console, and also if you have like 500 teeth going on a game that's been running for a whole week. Uh, and then you lose power, or your internet drops, or anything happens, you lose all of the teeth you had in that session, so you kind of, like, it's a good idea to do, like, a checkpoint once a day, so the most you can ever lose is 100 teeth. Um, also, yeah. use, use a shit controller uh, that you don't need, because this will ruin your triggers. Yeah, there's springs in your triggers, and the springs will be become weaker if you keep them pressed in. Yeah. But, uh... Yeah, if you have an old controller, uh, it's really nice to do it during the night. Also, if if you make too many kills in a game, so if you, I think if you win it for like two days already, uh, you get a stack overflow and your game will end. So yeah. definitely reset it once a day if you're gonna do this. Yeah. Uh, I use this myself to get a, all the T upgrades on my local account. I was not gonna do that again. I I always play online when I do speed runs and that kind of stuff or score runs and yeah i needed it on my local account i was not gonna play thousands of games on my local account so i just did it there for example yeah i did the same i i was grinding my local play account to um to get like double class so i could do speed runs offline and not worry about my internet dropping or anything um and yeah. i got like 700 teeth in and then some guy this this glitch originated just from some fucking guy on a Discord server. He was like, "Hey, by the way, here's how you totally break the game." <laughs> and so beautiful. Yeah, right. So then I, I did that the rest of the way. If you uh like if you ever want to play with half mortal, you're probably gonna have to do this. Uh, cause you, you know, yeah. local play only. And then I have a, I have some frequently asked questions that uh I get regarding the AFK <laughs> tooth farm. Number one, is this patched? No. <laughs> Will this get me banned? No. Also, no. <laughs> there is. You do ruin the leaderboards by getting a million kills. Yeah. But that's okay. Yeah, that's. The leaderboards are not important. It fucks up it's the... an old game. Yeah, it fucks up the the, the kills leaderboard and, and stuff. Um, like only if you go to weekly, yeah. you will be like number one kills. If, if you go to F forever, some people have millions of kills. I bet this also trashes your cash flow. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it ruins your stats. But who cares? Yeah, right. I mean, it's, as long as you don't care about about the stats and you got a spare controller, this is just, just do it. No judgment. Just get your upgrades. Yeah, I don't enjoy judge. the game. Also, side note, nobody uh, knows this. Uh, you can also hack your teeth on PC. <laughs> I made a video about this. It's not on a spreadsheet because it's illegal. <laughs> yeah, it's uh. <laughs> It's it's a little suspect. You gotta do um, I've done it myself. It's a little sus. But I've also done it. It's like like I hacked the teeth and then I'm I'm going back and I'm earning the teeth like retroactively so I can feel good about myself and also like, you know, play the game on my really nice computer. <laughs> but Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I mean if you don't want to grind all the teeth and you have it on PC, yeah, you can watch that video, it's on my channel. Uh you can Hack 2,555 teeth in. It's just enough to buy every teeth upgrade, and then you're done. <laughs> yeah, just uh, be careful to do exactly what it says in the video. If you won't, yeah, do uh, exactly what it says. Don't use the cheat engine for any other thing. It might get you banned. Yeah. Do exactly what I do, and then you won't get banned. <laughs> if you need help with it, just hit me up in Discord. Yeah. I also have a video about what teeth upgrades 
are the best. Some TD upgrades are just insane. Uh, some TD upgrades are really expensive, so I do recommend getting a few of the cheaper ones before getting the stupid expensive one to help you with the grind. Uh, so in this video, I made like an order of what you should buy, what to prioritize, what to immediately buy, like toughness, because they're just so important. The toughness reduces the flinch in this game, the flinch is insane. Uh, and then I talk about the bigger TD upgrades, like... Uh, Bosses Gav, uh, Critter Slayer, and Double Claws, which are really expensive. That's like the big grind. And then the T degrees are less important. So, yeah, watch this video it's, uh, if you want to know what T degrees to get. Yep. It's a, really, it's a really good video. That that tier list way was a, a really good way to show it. Yeah. Okay, so then the people, hive duration. People love tier list. Yeah. yeah it's it's really good. It's And it's not just like a, like a here's the things ranked it's this like this is the order you should get them in <laughs> that's yeah it's more important yeah right because otherwise the book would just be at the top and shit but yeah right because I mean, it's also stupid expensive and there's it's not like you have to pick between the tooth upgrades once you have them all you just put all of them on um, yeah 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 uh so, this is just yeah the information hive... it's good to have yeah good to know it's the hives last this long. This chart's been around for a while, but I did add the time until enemies spawn uh, section. And yeah, you read this at your own leisure. There's uh, some this two hours forty seven minutes. It's a very interesting number. It's it's what it is. I've I've tested this a lot. Wasted a lot of time on that. Um, yeah, there's like there's a lot of spots where you think that you have infinite time, and effectively you do, right? I mean, you have almost three hours between the areas, but it's not actually infinite. Or you know. <laughs> yeah, did you know if you spawn in a point of contact, even before you do an hive, aliens can start to spawn after 2 hours and 47 minutes? Oh, I actually, I never tested that. Shit. I, 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 I was resetting for score wins. I got good hives, uh, but I was cooking as well. Yeah. Uh, so I, I cooked, I ate, and then I suddenly went out. So I thought, okay, I'm just going to go out. And then I came back, and I was dead. I was so <laughs> surprised. But apparently, aliens do start to spawn after 2 hours and 47 minutes, even if you don't place the drill. Yeah. It's it's weird. It's There are, there are plenty of areas where it is legitimately an infinite amount of time. But yeah, it's this... What, whatever 100... What, what is that? Um, 100... Uh, 67 minutes i guess there's some significance there maybe maybe there's like some integer limit involved with this but yeah yeah probably anyway just good information to have um do you know how much time you have before enemies start spawning a regular kind of hardcore difficulty also nice to know how long every hive takes yep and then um Next section. Next section, the XP notes. This hasn't really changed much. Only thing we, you know, it's uh, it's just straight list of information about uh, experience points, right? Um, the uh, so the Rhino Run is the fastest way you can get XP in the game. Um, I actually have it up here in the time until enemies spawn, but you go into um, the third area of point of contact, and then after six minutes of uh, of just killing the enemies that spawn, it just it starts to spawn infinite infinitely respawning rhinos um and if you go into casual point of contact with oh actually we, we you don't need engineer except for the money engineer is useful for mortars <laughs> uh not because it makes them do more damage just just because it makes you uh be able to hold 8k <laughs> yeah but it is not even important just for a tank yeah. to be honest yeah just tank and weapon specialist you can get the mortars out faster yeah, so you don't die. There's a video showing it. It's uh, yeah, you just it literally just farm rhinos with mortars on casual, dub. Yeah, rhinos give a lot of XP. The amount of XP you get really much based on the amount of HP they have. Mm -hmm. So big alien give big XP. XP. Yeah. All alien give less. Exactly. If you do the AFK uh, teeth farm, you actually also get a lot of XP. Yeah. And you know that's fully AFK. You probably be like once or twice. Yeah. So if you just want the levels, uh, you can also do that, I guess. But normally you just level up while you play. 
you don't need to worry about XP that much. Yep. Yeah, usually this isn't... There's only very, very specific circumstances where you need to level like, up Only fast. if you really want to do relic runs and you need 9 prestigious as fast as possible, this can be useful. But You can be there in uh, little time if you really want it with this method. Yep. And then here's the uh, XP required to complete each level. Nothing crazy here. Uh, yeah. That is the... That is the end of the first part of the spreadsheet. Yeah, now we, we get made to, it. Now we get to the, the big boy, the 11 by 17. <laughs> the loadout. Yeah. This is cool. This is brand new. This is... Uh, yeah, this is brand new. This page... Uh, 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 I'll let you do... You did most of this. Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead. So uh, this part goes every loadout and every upgrade of every loadout option. Uh, the loadout upgrades describe uh, what the upgrade does, but it is not clear what it does. So, for example, um, how much movement speed does Medic actually give? We have the number. Uh, how much damage does the portable turret get when you upgrade it? We have the actual number, the, those kind of stuff. Yeah. So, we put it all in here exactly what it does sometimes they're a bit fake about it like increase in damage uh this stretch hunters and it's like what what does it do just tell me yeah <laughs> here it is there's there's lots of times when it says it does something and it doesn't i think there's more times yeah, but, when but, it doesn't but, say that it does something but it does <laughs> yeah exactly sometimes you do get damage buffs and stuff and doesn't even mention it for example the mk uh, it gets fire shots at plus three, but for some reason it also gets a sick ass damage buff. Yeah, it's insane. Which is really important. This is the DPS on this is higher than the bulldog. <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy. The the portable turret it says like oh you get armor piercing ammo, but actually you get a fucking thirty percent damage buff. It's insane. Yeah, it's it's silly. And then like um, I I, I gave here's that that um. That color coding DPS calculation again. This is for some some of these have a little like uh, fire rate buff, you know. So I just went with the the highest uh, rate of fire you can get just by the the thing on its own, no uh, no uh, you know melee speed buff or anything, and then the highest damage value. And so here's your max DPS for each of the equalizers, and they interact interestingly with the other buffs, you know, because it can't ever be simple. So the portable yeah. turret uh, does not get the weapon specialist damage buff. The grenade turret does not get the engineer explosive buff. Um, but interestingly, it seems to not be affected by do less damage. So that's something for the grenade turret. It's um, not affected by nothing. Yeah, right. It's, it, it doesn't care. <laughs> then uh, yeah. Riot Shield gets the tank buff and the uh, melee speed buff from team boosters. MK32, of course, does not get the engineer explosive buff because why would it? So just yeah, run it with only explosion. Yeah, right. Just run it with weapon specialist for the uh, reload. Yeah. And then this is the the interesting one. The death machine does get the weapon specialist like 50% damage buff. Combine that with you know it getting a big uh, upgrade to 75 damage per shot at plus four, and this thing can really shred if you if you build for the death machine. But that takes time. Yeah, it actually it does quite good damage on the barrier, for example. Or if you use it on the breeder, it's also pretty good. Yeah. Uh, also, in, in the game, you can't see the cost of any of the upgrades. You have to go in-game to see what an upgrade, or what a ammo or team support or strike breaks actually costs. But I made it here as well, so you can see what everything costs without having to go in-game. Which is kind of nice. I also added notes about random shit that I know about everything. Uh, like, there's so many things, like, tank is a flare. It doesn't mention it anywhere. Yeah. But it's nice to know. Uh, and like, if Ever Specialist Plus One gives, uh, can you can make it so you can quick box, which is really important. We should have added a link here, to be honest, to the, your video. Oh, to so the, the um, Slayer? I think I have a link there further down, but yeah. To the the quick box thing, but the link is further down. The, oh, the, the sheet, quick box. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I also have a video ranking all the classes if you want to watch it. Uh, also oh, all the double classes. 
We got the, uh, the engineer plus four buff now. <laughs> so. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, like, uh, like we said, it, the trap buff doesn't apply to Teslas because the game thinks that they are craftables and not traps. Uh, and then the explosive buff. It seems to only apply to environmental explosives, so there are three of them. That's the propane tanks on point of contact, then the red explosive barrels that you see around on some of the maps, and then the, the transformers you see on Nightfall. And we think that's it. Yeah, so in the description <laughs> it says, boost the damage of explosives. So at the start we were thinking like, oh, explosives, like the casket, like Centex like mortar strikes like ims explosions there are so many explosions in the game but it actually applies to nothing <laughs> yeah <laughs> which yeah. is unfortunate so like why? Really is. why would you make it so shit engineer is already not the best yeah. uh, class you can run it's like definitely less good than the rest of them and for some reason even one thing that's like potentially really good is does nothing <laughs> It was just really unfortunate. Yeah. But we did test this a lot. Yeah, yeah, we, uh, we put a lot of time into that. A stupid amount of time went into testing all the explosions, the venom, the IMS, the mortar strikes, grenade turret, MK, nothing gets the buff. Only propane tank barrels and transformers. Yep. <laughs> I, Transformers I, are like the electric bolt things that you can explode. Yeah, yeah, it's like on the power lines in Nightfall, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty shit. Yep. So engineer uh, F F tier. Engineer ass. Yeah. <laughs> okay, then we can go to the score stuff. Oh yeah, this is new. Yeah. So. Uh... A lot of people are into score winning, or some really dedicated people are into score winning. And um, it's nice to have uh, all the information somewhere. And uh, this basically describes how much score you can get for each hive. So, for example, this is point of contact. In regular difficulty, uh, in the first area, you get 10,000 score for a hive. This is three sections, drill, personal skill challenge uh we will go into what each topic does later in hardcore you get a straight up 1.25 multiplier uh so here's hardcore the maximum score you can get is one two five zero zero and the score for each section is also multiplied by one two five uh, yeah this is point of contact you can see what score you can get for each hive it's nice to see after a hive, you have to score at the top right. You can see, oh, I lost this much score here. I lost this much score here. And but just by knowing it, you can improve. So it's really nice to have these numbers so you can compare. Yep. And we'll, we'll talk more about it later, but the relics, um, all the relics do is they take uh, your total score and then they just multiply it by uh, an, a, a, oh God. They multiply it by an additional 20% per relic. So... One relic is 1.2x, two relics is 1.4, three 1.6, 1.8, so that you know five relics is double and ten relics is triple score. That's uh, all the relics do to like yeah. these normal scores. The relic is really yeah. really weird with the escape score, <laughs> but that's different. I also uh, really quickly on co-op, uh, your score is divided in four sections. You have the drill, personal skill, and challenge, but you also have teamwork. But again, we will go into what each section is later. Yep. But yeah, the escape. <laughs> uh, the faster you escape, the more score you get. That's basically it. Just escape as fast as you can. Uh, but it gets kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> because, uh, because we can escape really quickly now with glitches and tricks to skip the meteors and shit. The escape gives a stupid amount of score. Like, one-third of the game's score you get is from the escape. Yeah. Which lasts, it's, like, it's 15 stupid. seconds now. <laughs> yeah, the escape only takes... It takes less than a minute. And the game expects you to take, like, more than two minutes, at least. 
so now the score you get is insane and like it's more than half of the no wait not more than, it's one third of your score is going to be escape score at least uh this gets even more crazy in co-op because for some reason there is a glitch in the game that if you if you play co-op and you get into the helicopter the escape score is calculated but not yet distributed so if all your teammates leave you get all the score from the escape so you basically get four times more score from the escape than you would normally it's just stupid yeah it's actually stupid you, we have if a... you run relics it also gets multiplied by the amount of relics you run so here's a quick example if you run 10 relics and you would instantly escape you would get fuck uh yeah. 300 78 day score and if you multiply that with uh four you get 1 million 242k so in in cope what we do is we we run, we escape as quickly as possible all the teammates leave and we get like literally a million score <laughs> yeah. which is more than you can ever get in a game it's stupid <laughs> the leaderboard is full of runs with million plus score because of this yeah this this glitch is is crazy um i i love this formula like the escape score formula like like this is this is what it is it's a four yeah, variable equation is is. that is quadratic in relics like if you if you expanded this out like algebra 2 style you you have a term here that's r squared why yeah, because I... it's two times a relic <laughs> yeah, multiplier. Yeah, right. You have the relic multiplied by itself in here. I don't know why it is this. I have no idea how those guys found this out, but it's what it is. Also, massive uh, massive shout out to Pillow. He basically dropped like this entire score section in here, just from his archives yeah. or or whatever. And then all yeah, of... they all... kind of had it in Excel. They just posted it in here. Yeah, uh, yeah, it is really it... nice all... that now everybody has it. It's accessible to everyone. All I did was just make it pretty. <laughs> and yeah. Big shout out to Pillow for the score stuff. Oh yeah, he he added like probably at least pages. 12 of these pages. <laughs> yeah, he added a lot of pages on just score. Yeah. Oh boy, all right. Night um Anything else important about point of contact? Oh yeah, um the maximum score is of course not reachable. You can never escape in 4 minutes. But in a cope run, 3 minutes 15 seconds is like the fast you can get. Which still gets you a million score. And yeah. in hardcore it's even more. The solo, uh, like if you go as fast as I can go, you can get a 3 or 4 escape, which gives um, a lot of a lot of score. Uh, and in a typical run, if you don't do all the glitches, you get about a 1.5 left on the clock, which yeah, that's yeah, just a, just some examples. That's just that's just there as like what would like a normal person do, <laughs> you know? So like it's it's you, it's funny to compare like the the default like ooh I'm going yeah. to go fast and get a platinum and escape gets you uh like 180k and then the insane trickery that happens now is ten times more score than that almost. <laughs> yeah, it's stupid. There's a there's a graph later down in the notes that shows this and like how comical this black screen glitch is. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Nightfall. A lot simpler. Yeah. So, in Nightfall, you have uh, you have again all the hives. Uh, the further you go into the areas, just like a point of contact, if area one gives you the ten thousand score hive, area two gives you fifteen thousand, area three gives you twenty thousand. Uh, so the later you get in the game, the more important the hives get, the more score you get for it. And then you have the breeder score. Uh, and if you have the game, you will see a tab that's breeder score. And this is the breeder score you get from the first and the second breeder score combined. So it, it was hard to separate them, but we did figure out how it works. Mm. Um, the first breeder is based on time. But it's impossible to get maximum breeder score because the time will pass and you need some time to kill him. And if you get a bad challenge, like the destroy egg challenge, you lose a low score because of it. It's really annoying. Um, on the second breeder fight, however, uh, time is not an, uh, 
important factor. It's only personal skill. So don't get hit. Don't miss shots. Yeah. But I will get to that later. <laughs> hey. We've Mayday. Mayday is a mess. You have yes. all these areas. And uh, so you have the lower deck. Uh, hives 1 and 2. Hive 3 with the Kraken. Gives a bit more score because you have the Kraken there. I don't actually know exactly how the Kraken worked. I've never really competed uh, high score Mayday. Yeah. There's also no note about it. So I will just guess if you kill the Kraken, you get the score. If you don't kill it, you don't get the score. Um, then we have Hive 4 and 6, uh, which is also on the lower deck, which give like second area score or third area, I guess. And for some reason, the hive where you place the drill on the machine and the machine drives towards the hive and destroys the hive and then it comes back. The one where you can't repair the drill, you probably know it, uh, is like viewed as a hive in the upper deck. 20,000 score for it. After you do this hive, you want to do, do all the doors in the lower section because the door you open the score you get from it is based on the previous hive you did. So if you do it after the UGV hive, you get more score for the doors. But if you want to compete in high score uh, runs, it's really important to know. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, like a third area door, basically. Yeah, it's a third area door. Uh, so yeah, for the doors, they are very short, but you do get score for them. Uh, in Mayday, crafting was introduced. Uh, every time you craft, you get 500 points. So just make sure to craft a factor of sticky flares. They're amazing. Um, there's also two doors that you have to do. Uh, the one that gets you to the Kraken and the one after the Kraken. Oh, the, yeah, the, the arm, the tentacle. Yeah. Um... Yeah, then you have the valves, but the valves is basically just protect the, the valves and yeah. personal skill. Kraken is uh, time based. Fuck, uh, <laughs> I wish Pillow was here right now. Yeah. Uh, you can't really speed up the Kraken fight, so I don't actually know exactly how this works. It's probably based on how much time he puts the gas down, mm. so you want to minimize that. Yeah. That's my guess, at least. Yeah, there's, there's like a minimum time you can kill the Kraken in. <laughs> we'll probably add a note about this. Yeah. At some point. D7. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Awakening. Awakening is very simple. Uh, you have all the hives, give the same score. So, really easy. And no increase in score the further you go. Uh, the Vanguard section. Uh, you have personal skill, which speaks for itself. And then you have the Vanguard. Make sure the Vanguard gets hit at the lowest amount as possible. A sticky flag can help with this. In the Cortex, uh, activate the Cortex when it's ready. Uh, don't get hit. You get max score. With the with the Cortex, and you, put... you gotta hit it 10 times, okay. right? Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, we should add a note about that. Yeah, because... The... Yeah, we'll add a note about that. Yeah, because the, the Cortex, it's like, um, you, you get uh, the Cortex activation for, for hitting the, the Cortex, and I think they say it's a max of 10. So you gotta do... Right? Damn, that sucks. Yeah, <laughs> and then you have just... to stall for a long time. Yeah, yeah, they take a long time in the arc on those on those runs. Awakening Yeah. sucks to high score runs. So fucking because... slow. <laughs> <laughs> it's extremely slow in solo you you need to craft a fuck ton of sticky flares you have to activate the uh, medusa 10 times which you have to stall for which actually gets really hard because more and more hunters will start to spawn yeah in co-op you run like uh three players instead of what you normally do with four just because if you win four players the game is tended to crash oh. just because you take so long it's terrible yeah you 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 try to get the maximum score you can, and during the Medusa fight, the game will just crash. You're in the third area. We also reduce the amount of sentries we place just to avoid getting crashes. Ugh. Yeah, Awakening is an 
ugly man. <laughs> it's it's like a two hour high school run. Yeah. It sucks. Ugh. And then we have Exodus. <laughs> um, the doors uh, get increasingly more difficult and they get increasingly more score. Um, they are tended to be done first uh, because you don't need a protected will and you can focus on not getting hit and doing the challenges. Uh, except for the last two doors, they are really hard, so you do those last. Mm -hmm. uh, then we have the generators. The first two generators you do are easier. The third and fourth generator are a bit harder, they give a bit more score. Uh, they get harder by increasing the amount of hunters compared to uh, scouts and also more scorps. Uh, the gen fifth and sixth generator they give the most score. Um, ancestors give an extra amount of score and they are based on the generator you do them at so what you want to do is you want to do the one generator in the middle area and one generator in the chaos area and then the fifth and the sixth generator you want to be the ones with the ancestor so the ancestor gives 20,000 points uh, yeah, yeah 20,000 if you would do the two middle generators the ancestor would only give uh, 15,000 points. So you want to do the two highs or two generators with the ancestors lost so they give more score. Yeah, that's a, that's an important point that most people don't know about is the, the ancestor. You want them to be like quote-unquote third area ancestors so they give you more more points. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the Medusa, uh, it's the only area where personal skill is not important. So you can miss all your bullets, you can get hit, it doesn't matter. The only thing you need to do is make sure the Cortex doesn't get hit and you kill the Ancestor before the next one spawns. That's it. Also, if you, uh, you want to wait for the, after the Lost Ancestor finishes, there will be like an overtime. Yeah. You want to wait for it to start and then end the game because it will give you score. Yeah, you get that. It's like you're getting the third, uh, the third ancestor's score, uh, when the next wave starts. So you gotta let it play out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think it's pretty much it. All right. And then, then I will explain like what everything does. So you have personal skill, drill, teamwork, challenge, relic bonus, uh. Crafting, this kind of stuff. So in solo, the only things that are there is drill, personal skill, and challenge. Uh, the drill is really easy. Uh, the drill has health. Uh, if it takes damage, you lose score. It's really simple. Personal skill is a bit more complicated. It's divided in two separate parts. You have the accuracy and the damage taken. So about 40% of the personal skill score is accuracy and 60% is damage taken. Uh, you want to keep your accuracy at 100%. Uh, this can be really easy though. If you run Crypt the Slayer ammo, every hit you do with fire uh, or explosion will count towards a hit. So with Crypt the Slayer ammo, Cryptus will take a lot of fire damage. And because of that, your accuracy will normally always stay on 100%. Unless you start shooting like crazy. Um, the other part is damage taken. Um, so every time you take damage, you lose a pretty decent chunk of score. But winning armor uh, negates a lot of the damage and will also make it so you lose less score. So that's why normally armor is run in high score runs. Uh, some tips with this is uh, don't run IMS flaming pools or don't make your teammates run IMS flaming pools because the fire can damage you. Also, don't damage yourself with like traps. Uh, don't shoot your pistol if you run turrets. Also, your accuracy will stay at 100% if you don't shoot a bullet. So, for example, if you only knife during hive, you will get 100% accuracy. Uh, turrets are not counted to your accuracy as well. So, if you use a portable turret or grenade turret, your accuracy will stay at 100% as long as you don't shoot. Yeah, so, it's... there's two options. Go all in turrets or use Crypto Slayer ammo. 
it's different than uh the accuracy is, is different than the the, the challenge. accuracy challenge. Yeah, the challenge is completely different. Yeah. <laughs> the challenge sucks. Yeah. Uh, then you have the challenge. Uh, this is just a flat score based on if you complete the challenge or not. This can be uh, really annoying with challenge RNG, uh, with portable turrets, or with portable and grenade turrets. You can't do every challenge. Also, random challenges can happen, which can be really hard to some hives. Uh, but it's really basic. Then we have teamwork. Teamwork is only a thing in co-op. And this is based on a few things. Uh, like half of it is based on the amount of uh, damage you deal. And half of it is based on the amount of boxes you pick up and the boxes you throw. Uh, the damage, you just want to deal the majority of damage. So if you get like half the aliens, if you do a lot of damage against rhinos, you will get the maximum score here. And the 10 drops is uh, based on the amount of drops you throw and the amount of drops you pick up. Uh, so, for example, if you pick up ammo, ferals, and money, you get 3 drops. If you throw armor and ammo yourself, it's 5 drops. And you just keep doing that until you have 10. Um, there's a few exceptions to this. If you do a door next soda, you need 20 drops. If you, oh no, you need 17 drops, sorry. If you do a barrier high from point of contact, you need 20 drops, but normally it's 10 drops for every teamwork. Uh, with 10 relics, there is a glitch you can do to pick up drops and still get maximum teamwork. So with earn you keep, you normally can't get the teamwork score to be maxed out, but with a glitch you can. But I think I covered that in the glitches section in a bit. Yeah, I think I think it's down there. Then we have the relic bones, which Eric already talked about. Every relic you run is basically a 20% extra score. So you can run 10 relics, you get 200% extra score, so you basically triple the amount of score you have. Um, hardcore gives a flat 1.25 multiplier, and crafting gives a base score 500, which also gets multiplied by the amount of relics you have. And hardcore. And I think that covers everything. Yep. Uh, then we have some uh, some specific things. For example, this is, uh, uh, this is the the escape the map score. specific this things. The, this is the same as what we we had up there on the the point of contact like yeah. the spreadsheet page. It's that same one. So. If you want to do a high score on any of these maps, make sure to take a look here. Here's some more in-depth information. For yeah. example, about the dropping 20 drops during a barrier hive, the escape score uh, calculated. Escape score with black screen explained. I think a little further down. Uh, here's which... Yeah, the graph. You can do the graph. Or, well, no, like a, a little further down, we, we also have like explanations on how the loadout, like loadouts work. And upgrade strategies oh yeah I'll, I'll get to that i will get to that <laughs> yeah okay so the this graph this is fun it's um it's more just to to emphasize how obscene the black screen glitch is and i would actually use this to like pick out data but um so this is possible escape scores on point of contact so these bottom 10 lines are for zero to ten relics and um this, it looks backwards, right? This graph is time remaining in seconds. So if you escape immediately with, with four minutes left, that's 240 seconds with 10 relics, you get, you know, this much score. And then as the time runs down, the um, uh, your score gets lower, right? And then yeah. you can see the, the quadratic relationship with the relics here because the space in between the lines... Uh, is increasing every single time you go up a relic. And then these top two lines are uh, 9 and 10 relics with the black screen glitch. And you can see they are like several times more score. And it's Yeah, they're stupid. <laughs> yeah, so I think that covers point of contact. Black screen, black screen glitch OP. Uh, then we have some tips on Nightfall. Uh, we have some tips on Mayday. Here's also uh, explained how the tentacle works, so we don't need to add a comment about that. 
it's only based on defeating it, like I thought. Uh, it's also explained about the doors, which I covered. Uh, crafting, valves, creating a fight. Yeah, it's just. Uh... Creating a fight, that's a time component to it. We need to figure out how that works. That's weird, because. <laughs> Not much room. It There's takes not... nine activations of the cortex indeed and a cope it takes twelve activations solo. Ah, uh, okay. That's what I was expecting as well. Oh nine nine for cope, twelve for solo. Yeah. Um There's no score for crafting on awakening for some reason. Okay. We gotta craft this shit. Yeah, you have to go to shit them anyways. Um, then we have loadouts for uh, every map. So you have basically two options for high score wins. You go either nine relics and you only turn... Oh, the only one you don't turn off is... Uh, don't turn on is in your keep. That way you can run uh, Crypto Slayer ammo, Ferals or Crypto Slayer ammo and armor. Uh, or you go all in without no machines and you go grenade turret uh, with sentries or portable turret with sentries. You can also do 8 relics, that way you can use a gun like the MO28, could display ammo, and a feral armor. But of course, 9 relics will give you more scores. So if you really want to compete on the highest level, you win 9 relics. But it's definitely good to start with 8 relics just to get a feel for how different it is. Because yes. score runs are completely different than your regular runs. Because you want to be protecting the drill and stuff. Yeah, it's like a totally different mental mindset. I yeah. I want to try like a, so, like a 9 relic, no mortal <laughs> run. It's just to like see if it's even possible. But the score would be absolutely uh, terrible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then we also have an upgrade order. Of course, if you run these setups, you, you want to know what what to upgrade. Uh, if you go turrets, you normally go... Point of Coolness is an exception because you have the 75% accuracy challenge at the start, which you have to do upgrade sentries for. Uh, but if you run pistols, you normally go uh, a bit into pistols, so you get that arc attachment and that uh, extend max. Then you go all into armor. Uh, then a bit into well, <laughs> it's all over the place here. Yeah. Basically, you do a bit of armor, you do a bit of pistols, then you go max in ammo. But for every map, it slightly varies. It's been optimized like crazy, but um, you want to get your pistol upgraded a bit. Then you want your armor armor upgraded a bit so you don't take damage. And then you want to max out your ammo. So if you have Crypto Slayer ammo maxed out, it will regen ammo. And one ammo box can give you the maximum amount of ammo you can have in your reserve, which is broken. So after you do your pistol and your armor a bit, you want to upgrade your ammo to max so you uh, don't need to worry about ammo anymore. You can just throw it once and you don't have any mo money problems anymore. With turrets, it's normally... Uh, upgrade your grenade turret to plus 3 or your portable turret and then max out your sentries so you can have two sentries to protect yourself and then max out your grenade turret and then you only upgrade your pistol to like plus 1 or 2 for because you have spare skill points uh, if you want to get into score running uh, don't try 9 relics out of the gate take it slowly set a goal, practice uh, learn about the maps and only if you have a good feeling about it you can like, try to be better if you need to know anything about score running there is like a really helpful community of the high school guys I call them uh, if you just ask about score in the the discord they will help you they are really helpful uh, pillow Venonier, that kind of people um, so yeah, here's a bit of an introduction to the score runs. Uh, what is important? What maps are easier? Uh, pistols versus turrets. How RNG is affected? There's also a section about co-op strategies. Um, with 9 and 10 relics. 
what you should win, what people should be winning, what type of stuff, how to maximize boxes, that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's an obs obscene amount of information. Hello, Cambridge. It's a lot of information. <laughs> if you want to get into score winning, I would definitely recommend reading this. Uh, there is so much good information here. It's really nice to have it all in one place because the, the, this wasn't the case. Yeah. I just kind of knew all this, but it's really nice that we have it in one place now so people can read it and get into it. Man, I, I didn't know shit at all. I'm, I'm glad we got <laughs> y'all to help collaborate on this and expand the spreadsheet. This thing's going to be its own. Like, th this is the Wikipedia at this point. <laughs> Yeah, this is document. better than the Wikipedia yeah, for sure. Right. This is what actually it is. There is no BS on here. Yeah. We've we've tested okay. like then every we go into your section. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, we we also have like damage drop. Oh boy. Um so I'd mentioned this before. We have these graphs here. I think there's eight. Yeah. Um these are like if you've ever used uh Simfic or any of those like multiplayer game uh, weapon stat graphs, they look like this, right? It's telling you, on the bottom we have range, uh, and on the on the top this is the weapon damage, and so for for the K7, you know, here's in, in orange is its raw damage value, right? It starts at 90, and then you hit, you hit a point uh, I call the min range, is where the, the distance at which your damage starts decreasing, and it decreases linearly, to the uh, this damage here. Actually, I think I got the max. I think the max would be the range. Uh, but yeah, you just flat damage, linear drop, flat damage. That's how every weapon's damage drop works in in Ghosts. Um, and so these weapons are uh, all of the ones on Exodus that are able to take holographic sights. The value, the unit on the x-axis here is footsteps. So uh, I didn't want to try to use feet or meters because what what is defined as a foot is so, like tiny, you know, <laughs> and the game doesn't use those numbers anyways. They're they're using like some like you know pixel measurement thing for counting distance. But with your footsteps, as long as you're walking forward, your character your character's footsteps are the same distance every single time, no matter how fast you're walking. So it's it's consistent and it's actually like you can kind of get a feel for this if you just walk around a little bit. Um, and yeah, for all the weapons, I have them with arc mu or arc muzzle break and nothing. You can see that the arc is just dramatically better uh, at every range in every instance. Uh, on the yeah, big respect for figuring this out and testing all this. <laughs> yeah, I I wish that uh, every gun was available on Exodus because then we could have. We could have these uh, charts for everything, but until until it gets data mined, I won't. I wouldn't be able to get reliable enough information about the other guns to put something like this together with any degree of confidence for them. Um, yeah, I these comparison ones down here, like the Maverick versus R5. I I thought these were pretty interesting. So, um. So yeah, the, definitely are. the Maverick is use the blue one here. So it's like the Maverick is slightly better than the R5 up close. It has like a little higher rate of fire, but the R5 has a lot more range. So it like in that mid range area, the R5 outperforms it. It's not by much, but you know it's it's something. And then yeah, here's your IA2 just categorically beating the MK14 because it has a higher fire rate. Yeah, it's it's better in every way. Yeah, right. It's just, it's just better. There's some guns that are like that that just are better. I kind of yeah. skipped over all of the text here at the start of the damage drop, but it's just that's just what I um have gone over. Oh, you graphs. tested it. Yeah, I, I tested the shit out of this. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah. Then Our... we have uh, the bolts. Oh yeah. So. Uh. uh... Yeah, I'll do barrier hives. So the arc multiplier just doesn't affect barrier hives. It's what we said earlier with, you know, the arc wasn't around back then. I guess they just never got coded it. <laughs> but um, it 
as weird as that is, it's how it works, and it's why, uh, in point of contact, we're not tweaking about getting arcs um, on our guns for the speed runs because it doesn't make a difference. We, it's more about the extended mags matters more than the arc. Yeah, the and only then, reason why I would want an arc is for, for the range. Yeah, <laughs> right. Like range on the bulldog, just making sure you get the max damage. Range on the bulldog, time. yeah. Yeah, but... and then and then the barrier hives. So, uh, I I said earlier like the enemies have HP scalers for how many players are in the game, but the bosses are an exception. Here is the exception. Um, so the two barrier hives in solo, it's 66 for the first, 100 for the second, and then in co-op, it's 100 for the first, 150 for the second. It's just you're, they're just defined as those numbers. There's no multipliers involved. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I will do the breeder then. Yeah, yeah, you, it's your, your baby. Yeah, it's, it's my baby. <laughs> so like the like the barrier hives, the breeder doesn't take more damage from an arc. It's actually bad to have an arc during the first breeder fight because the first breeder fight is like uh, inside the wall that separates the first and the second area. So often his head will be behind the invisible wall, and with an arc, don't hit him. This is really annoying. Yeah. So this is the only place where you don't want to have an arc, basically. Uh, I definitely hit my yeah. uh, my 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 SV cheats one speed button there. <laughs> Fuck that text up. Oh, oops. Yeah. Well, <laughs> how would you I have, put that in there? I I <laughs> I have uh, on the side of my keyboard. I have buttons that have commands typed to like on a macro. And so I think I just accidentally oh, nice. hit that and missed it inside the wall of text. We'll we'll mark that for for fixing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. Anyway. Yeah. Um. So an arc might potentially miss out on collaterals in a breeder because he has multiple hit zones overlapping in his face. You can only hit the breeder on those critical hits. Uh, the venom is the only gun that can hit the breeder anywhere on his body. Um. Because it's programmed like that, it's like programmed to be the counter to the breeder. And for some reason, if you hold the venom next to your hand, you can knife the breeder also anywhere. Because if you hold the venom in your hand, your character is, I guess, programmed to hit it anywhere. So your knife can also hit it anywhere, which is kind of funny. Uh, during the final breeder fight, oh yeah, in the first breeder fight, if you kill it too quickly, uh, you soft lock, uh, which has happened to me a lot. <laughs> it's really annoying. So. Um... Yeah, look out with that if you want to speed run, I guess. Um, second breeder fight uh, is two phases. Uh, in the first phase, he goes to half health. In the second phase, you can kill him. In the second phase, he can start healing himself, and he has these healing pots. Um, which can be really annoying. It's the only boss that can heal himself. And because of that, it becomes sometimes really hard to kill him in challenge runs. Like the melee only run or the ten relic run. Um, the breeder in the final fight has weak spots on his belly that you can destroy, which does like a fifth of his health, which is quite a bit. But it's actually just fast to spray his head because uh, he dies really quickly if you spray his head. You can kill him before he even thinks about regening. Uh, then we have the one cycle. So, like I just told, the breed has two cycles. He goes to half health, he becomes invulnerable, he leaves for a minute, and he comes back. But during the first 10 seconds when the breeder spawns, he can't activate his invulnerability. So, if you kill him really quickly, uh, you can kill him before he becomes invulnerable, and you can one cycle him, saving him more than a minute in the speed run. It's absolutely insane. Yeah. Uh, this can be done by uh, running mortar strikes, fully upgraded, uh, running weapon specialists, fully upgraded, and engineer, and then also having the Venom X. Before the breeder even spawns in, you want to call in five mortar strikes, and that's why you need engineer for that 2000 extra cash, so you can buy five mortar strikes instead of four. Uh, you buy those five mortar strikes. As soon as the health bar appears, those mortar strikes are going to fall on top of him. You also shoot your Venom, so there is constantly gas damage and explosive damage in the Venom. And you can kill him extremely quickly. I've killed him in 7 seconds before. And then he uh, dies before he even goes away. 
and this doesn't break the game. The game actually ends, and it's how I got an insane speedrun. And it's actually a really nice speedrun coming very soon. Yeah, yeah. That that breeder one cycle is like probably one of the coolest things in the in all of the extinction speedruns. Yeah. it's pretty sick. Yeah, that that's insane. The biggest times ever ever found. Yeah, except for the. Door glitch and exodus, but that doesn't count. Yeah, door glitch and fucking point of contact. Oh yeah, point of contact is also big though. All maps so have found big time saves. Yeah, except Awakening. Oh, the out of bounds and point. So except for Mayday, <laughs> fucking Mayday map. Mayday is so stupid. Mayday sucks. Speaking of that, we have the Kraken, so... The... Oh yeah, um, I, the I did a... fight can be one cycle solo. And three player and four player, but two players can't be done because it has more than double the amount of HP and it's already really tied to one cyclone solo. With two players, it's impossible. Yeah. With three right. and four players, it can be done. Yeah, that's another example but of take the, over. the co op boss HP being weird in its own way. But, um, so the Kraken, this tentacle has uh, <clears throat> deceived us for a very long time. Uh, Lots it's about the first tentacle that spawns <laughs> like third hive. Yeah, third hive tentacle. Um, my uh, my latest statement about it is that it has 10,000 HP and a minimum duration of 15 seconds. Uh, I, I put that video out recently about it with like the FP6. Uh, yeah, damage done before the 15 seconds are up will count, but you'll need to shoot it again after the 15 seconds is up to like get rid of it. Uh, and I, I test that with like a bulldog, right? Because you can go in with a bulldog and just and you'll deal way more than 10,000 HP, but it still takes 15 seconds. Um, and then, like we saw in that video, it's super buggy with full auto weapons. Like it definitely has like some kind of laggy iframe crap happening. Um, so, so like most of the shots just aren't even connecting when you shoot something with a really high fire rate at the tentacle. Um, of course, the arc doesn't work on it, because why would it? Um, <laughs> and it, it doesn't take any explosive damage at all. It's like only only stuff that hits it directly is, is dealing damage. Uh, so it's just... It's unnecessarily weird for something to take that's just there for like one hive and leaves, but... Tentacle. Um, then for the Kraken fight... He's got four stages, but you're not taking off 25% of his health each stage. It's it's 20%, 25, 25, 30. Um, I guess that because they thought it would flow better like that. Then... Yeah, making the last fight a bit harder. Yeah, what, what we were talking about with the, uh, the timing component being weird is that he... Um, he can't do his... Uh, like the phase change when he goes under the sh under the ship, like you've you've done the first phase, uh, until he starts the like heating the deck up and making it all red, uh, and that it takes him a slightly randomized amount of time to get to the point where he heats the deck because of he has like animations that play out and depending on which animations you get, um, it it, it can change the the time by. Not a ton, but it's enough to make a big difference in a speedrun and maybe potentially the score. I don't know. And uh, yeah, probably. Also, the the Kraken fight's just weird. He is absolutely littered with um, invincibility thresholds, where it's like before before he goes into like the the red phase, you can only take off like you know like ten percent, fifteen percent, or whatever. Of his health, and then after you do that amount of damage, uh, your shots literally do zero damage to him. Uh, so yeah, the yeah, Kraken is just a nightmare for like any type of speed running. Yeah, it's just RNG cutscene. Yeah, literally. So the memo played like hundreds of games to beat my record, and I've gonna play thousands of games to beat his record now. Every every second makes it way harder. <laughs> Yeah. You want to take the Ancestor? I'll do the Ancestor. Sad, the Ancestor has a critical hit multiplier of 1.2 on his head. Uh, snipers receive a higher critical hit ratio for some reason. Uh, we don't know why that happens. It's just uh, yeah. Ancestor's shields pop up uh, when he takes a certain amount of damage. And if you throw a 
disruptor nade or shoot a fully charged disruptor. The shield is uh, destroyed and the ancestor can't put up a shield again. So this is the moment you want to deal a fuck ton of damage. Because you can't put up a shield, so you won't hit the, the shield damage marker. So for 10 seconds you can just go ham, shoot your bulldog, shoot your NX, do a lot of damage. Then you will put up a shield again, you destroy it, and then you can do that again. Uh, that's the easiest way to kill him. So make sure to do a lot of damage after you shoot your NX bullet. Yeah, uh, here's a video of uh, I think it's mine. Eric destroying the breeder really fast. Yeah, it's yeah the the ancestor. Uh, every yeah, he he pulls up yeah. his shield after like two thousand damage if he hasn't been disrupted previously, basically. So it's the combo clinks together, kill him super quick. Yeah. Uh, in Exodus, every ancestor you kill, you get a skill point. In the regular difficulty, you don't get a skill point on hardcore difficulty. Uh, during the Medusa fight, like the final fight, uh, there will be a Medusa on each door. Uh, each door will last four seconds, uh, four minutes, and after every door, you also get a skill point. And the HP values of the ancestors are right here. For some reason, his health doesn't increase from three to four players. Yeah, and it's just like weird <laughs> numbers, random. but they, these are straight out of the code, so that's what it yeah, is. Yeah, these are the data mine. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that will leave you with the yeah. weapon rotation. My, my weapon rotation that I wrote way too much about, but I, I like thinking about this. It's kind of yeah. cool. Um, yeah, basically, if uh, there's no weapon wheel in this game, it's not like GTA or Doom Eternal where you can pick which gun you have. You just have a as you pick up guns, they go into this rotation, and if you have way too many guns in there, you will have no idea what you're about to pull out, and so you'll just be switching weapons all the time and, like, die. So, uh, the way the way it works is, is super simple if you don't have a riot shield, because the riot shield can, like, come in and out of your inventory and, like, mess things up. But basically, it starts with your secondary, and then every time you obtain a new weapon, it goes to the end of the rotation, right? So, you got your pistol... Then you got that first primary you bought, then so you got a disruptor and then a bulldog from your pistol three, and so it you you know you switch weapons and you go down, 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 and then you're back to the start. Uh, if you get that that extra primary, it clutters you up a lot if you don't need it. So a lot of times I'll uh, I'll just not even get a second primary. Like I'll have my pistols maxed, but one one primary, <laughs> and then yeah, when you it have only gets annoying. Yeah. It can be tricky, but when you when you have a riot shield, it gets a lot worse, um, because you know it goes to the end like a normal weapon. But if it if it gets destroyed and you like buy a new gun, uh, or even if you just like I don't know like pit, look at a box the wrong way, uh, the riot shield will decide that it wants to move, <laughs> and then just like fuck you up. Um, so what what I've found. The best way to keep it consistent is just you buy a riot shield immediately after spawning in, uh, and then you never let it stay broken. Like, if it breaks, you just buy another one immediately, and then your rotation will stay consistent, and it'll just be this, like, secondary, riot shield, primary, wonder weapon. And that's really cool, because it puts the wonder weapon right after the primary, which lets you do things like like swapping to the disruptor super quick to kill phantoms on Exodus and Venom X for Gargoyles on Awakening, you know? So I like that. I am a nerd, so yeah. this is this is what I, I think of when I'm running it. You, you can, like, press... You press triangle twice, you go across, right? Press triangle uh, once, you go clockwise, like a clock, and you go the other way by pressing it three times. I kind of I kind of yeah. like to think about it like that. It's way... This is, like... <laughs> it's pedantic. You don't really need to worry about this at all, but it's kind of fun. And yeah, and then oh yeah, we have the the unplayable loadout. Yeah, so the maximum numbers of weapons you can theoretically have is seven, which is stupid. You can only do this in, by running uh, Exodus, I guess. No, you can lose on, on every map with the moss, but you need uh, your pistol, a primary like normal, a wonder weapon, uh, a secondary primary with pistol plus three. Then you buy your Royd Shield, which will be your uh, sixth gun. No, it's fifth gun. 
Yeah, your fifth gun. Yeah. You can also have a soul flam, which takes up a completely separate spot. Uh, so that's your sixth gun. And with the glitch, you can add the mass uh, to your rotation. So by doing all that, you can have seven weapons in your rotation. So you would have to press Y seven web times to get the weapon you want. Yeah, if you miss it, you gotta go all the way around again. <laughs> yeah, I will probably do this in a video at some point for a meme. I do like a, like the day one edition so flam glitch. <laughs> and give yourself like ten. What? What? Remember the so flam glitch with the. Uh... Can... You can buy multiple guns. Yeah. Did you know you can uh, get multiple guns by uh, jumping into the void while holding I a Phantom Axe? I saw that. Sentry? Yeah, I haven't I haven't messed with it. But it's, like, it's like you're replacing you can... the Venom with the gun, right? Yeah. You can only do it once, though. Yeah. But I wonder I wonder if you can go to 8, to be honest. Maybe I can go to 8. It would be Wait. so funny. I have to try that. Can you get a Soflam on Awakening? Whoa! I just realized that I don't know that. I don't think you can, but I don't. I don't no. know. <laughs> Whoa! It certainly wouldn't that, make that sense. That just blew my mind. <laughs> Never thought about not getting so flames on awakening. You can you get uh, them on mayday? I don't think you can. Mm, get on Exodus. Yeah, yeah, you can definitely count on Exodus in that game. <laughs> I wonder if I can do the same glitch with that next. I will see about that. You know when I I did that uh that cursed weapons video a long time ago, and I I did that yeah. by giving myself like all of the guns and there's like a hard cap on the number of weapons you can have. I forgot how many it was. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know you needed to go, like one under the amount of weapon, like the total amount of weapons, or else you won't be able to use boxes, because those take up a weapon slot temporarily. Really? Yeah, that's that's why I said, like, <laughs> you can't look at a box the wrong way, because it's like, because you buy that box, you're technically yeah, yeah, giving and getting rid of a weapon, and so that can, like, mess your rotation up. Oh, that's funny, actually. Yeah. That's probably also why the infinite grenade it works and shit. Mm. Yeah, because you're deleting your weapon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so money multipliers. Yep. Simple. Uh, point of contact. Once you're in the third area, uh, I should have said on regular <laughs> difficulty, um, you get a thirty percent extra money for the rest of the game. It makes it so easy on on regular. So like this is nice. And then uh, mayday. It's the opposite. Once you plant the drill in third area, you get that point five x money multiplier, and it lasts all the way through the first stage of the Kraken fight. But once you start the second stage of the Kraken fight, um, you're back to making normal. And then you used to get this same money multiplier, uh, the 0.5, as soon as you got to the second area of Nightfall, but they got rid of that, probably because it was, like, unfun, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it was stupid hard. So, specialized ammo. Um, the incendiary. Yeah, but... <laughs> you want to take this one? Uh, we kind of covered this in the loadout section. Yeah, but, uh, we did, right? more information about every ammo type. Yeah, yeah, this is all up there in loadout. It's just elaborate. Yeah, it's on basically all up there. How much damage each fire pulse does. Uh, what the uh, high grade armor piercing ammo T to crit does. Uh, you can one knife scouts by hitting them on the armor with it. Yeah. Explosive explosive ammo is bad basically. That's yep. this section. <laughs> uh, I don't use, I don't use explosive. Do you use Crypto Slayer? Yeah. Okay, the Do the relic Slayer. The relic okay. section, this is a uh, this is greatly expanded on from the, the previous version. So um yeah, as we as we said earlier, twenty percent more score per relic, so take more damage, thirty three percent flat increase of the damage you take. Um it doesn't affect the amount of damage your armor takes, nor does it affect how much damage your teammates take. That this teammate damage is kind of a leftover myth from like its unfortunate wording um, but yeah it's just the damage you yeah. take um i think it affects the amount of damage you take underneath your armor like like the little tiny bit of health damage you take uh through armor it affects that but not your health uh or not the armor itself and then yeah it makes enemies target you more theoretically um pistols only it's pretty uh self-explanatory 
Uh, but if you have pistols and earn your keep, you get to use Pistol Beast to buy pistol ammo off of any wall weapon. Um, and then if the majority, as in like literally more than half of the players in the lobby, have pistols only equipped, you don't get the primary weapon challenges. Um, Which is kind of nice. Yeah, it's kind of convenient for like the Sigma Hardcore stuff. Um, yeah. Smaller wallet, uh, also self-explanatory, it cuts the money you earn down to 75%, limits your wallet size. Um, mortal does exactly what it says. We have that crazy half-mortal glitch that we'll talk about more to like partially bypass it in local play, but it, that doesn't affect the scoreboards or anything. Um, but it's, it's pretty cool. This half-mortal glitch is um, what is... Uh, theoretically going to make Ten Relic regular uh, achievable. Not not a not, so like a not a high score, but like it's theoretically possible with this. Yeah, it will be sick. It, yeah, that's gonna be a that's gonna be a fucking day when you hit that Exodus run, man. Oh man. Yeah, it will happen. I don't know if you ever played Halo with the skulls, but it's pretty yeah, similar to that. It's the the skulls. <laughs> I've never played it, but I, yeah. I I know about it. Yeah, um, using all the skills was at first thought to be impossible, but people did it, and then they started speedrunning it as well. I don't but know. I if think gonna... they just completed it. It was already stupidly hard. It's just like recently be completed. But anyway, Oof. other game. Yeah, it's gonna be. I I doubt it's anyone's gonna, gonna speedrun <laughs> Ten Relic other than maybe you. <laughs> no, no, I'm nev definitely never gonna do that. It's yeah, it's just, it's a very shitty way to play. You're not supposed. I'm to happy be able to, to play survive. It. Um, yeah, do less damage, 33% um, reduction in all damage done, um, seems to not apply to the grenade turret, pretty neat. <laughs> fragile, we talked about yeah. fragile a lot in the uh, health regen, um, yeah, like I said, it doesn't affect he healing from the medic ability, this is talking about the pul like the, the big circle. And then the fall damage that it makes you, that it makes you take, uh, it has a maximum value, I haven't measured it. Um, all, all I know is that it won't, like, one-shot you from full health. It's it's not, like, that much, right? It's, like, maybe a third, a quarter of your health maximum per fall. Yeah, I think it's, like, a fourth. Yeah, it's something like that. So it's not crazy. But the health, re the health regen nerf of Fragile is substantial. Uh, standard ground, 70% yeah. uh, multiplier to your base speed. And then, like we said earlier, it... Uh, it's beaten by feral instincts entirely. Um, so <laughs> no machines. Um, Very basic. Yeah, it, exactly what it says. There's, uh, I found a lot of visual bugs with with no machines and earn your keep, but unlike half mortal, they don't actually impact the gameplay. You can just make your loadout look really weird with with these guys yeah. messing around in local play. Okay, limited ammo. This one's actually interesting. So uh, each box of ammo is going to give you 20% of max ammo. This this means 20% uh, of the second number. Uh, like you have like 30 slash 240 in your assault rifle with 20% of that 240. Uh, regardless of what your ammo is upgraded to. So it doesn't matter if you're throwing down plus uh, one incendiaries or plus four incendiaries. It gets you the same amount of ammo. Um, yeah, so it comes down to just don't upgrade your ammo. Unless yeah. you're running crypto player or regular ammo. Yeah, because, because the... Uh, the plus three and plus four, like special upgrades from cryptid and regular, still work, right? So it auto fills your mag and, and does the ammo, re resupplies your ammo over time, which is a way to beat like the limited ammo by letting it just regen all your ammo up for you. Um, yeah, it also makes uh, high score runs a lot more possible with uh, nine relics. Yeah, and then this is really important. The um, when you throw a box of ammo, you want to throw it with a full magazine. Because it gives yeah. it gives you an extra mag well whatever amount of so you get this twenty percent ammo, uh, and then you also additionally get the amount of bullets you had in your magazine. <laughs> this is... Yeah, so for example if you throw a box with a chainsaw with one hundred bullets, you get three hundred bullets. But if you have an empty chainsaw, you only get two hundred bullets. If you have fifty bullets in your chainsaw mag, you only get 250 bullets. It's super weird. But always reload and then throw ammo to get more ammo. Yeah. 
which is a bit counterintuitive, but it works. Yeah, well, it's you know, it's interesting is that's how the uh, that's how the venom ammo originally worked. Uh, when you picked it up off the ground, you wanted to pick it up with two slash zero because it gave you two and then additional the whatever you had in your mag it matched. Oh really? Yeah, and then they they changed it to be fill your mag into in reserve. And then it was broke the other way around. That's yeah, funny. right. <laughs> and then we have our our favorite earn your keep. This is the worst relic by far. It um, it it is easier. Impossible. <laughs> it is easier to list what you still can do after you put earn your keep on than to list all the stuff it prevents you from doing. Um. Yeah. Yeah. It blocks everything. Um. There is a there's a glitch though. I think we we had mentioned it earlier. With mm -hmm. the uh, right here you got you got this glitch. I, I think you know more about it than I do. Absolutely, but I think uh, we also cover it in glitches. But I'm checking. Oh right yeah. Now. Okay. Uh, I don't see it in glitches though. I'll Maybe cover it now. Alright. So um, where are we? 39. So, uh, if you're going to earn your keep, you can't throw ammo or uh, support. You can't pick up boxes, and you can't search, and you can't do anything. Uh, but, of course, you want to have that team score for uh, for getting maximum score. So, you want to pick up boxes, which you can't, because you're going to earn your keep. But, if you uh, completely die out, people drop all the boxes that you need. Uh, you can... so. Your teammates can all drop three boxes, so you have three teammates. They can throw ammo, support, and money. By holding aim and jump, you can drop money. Um, you can also drop money yourself. And then you totally bleed out, and when you get revived, for some reason, the game uh, didn't check you in your keep, and you can pick up all those boxes. So you do this at the start of a hive. You can put ten boxes down. You get revived by going bleed out. And then you can pick up those 10 boxes and you're good. Uh, it's a lot of effort to do every hive. But if you want to go for the maximum amount of score possible, this is what people do. And it will just run 10 relics. Yeah. This is how the co-op game. This is how the all like the top co-op runs that, that have 10 relics uh, all and done. Then, like 15 plus downs. This is this is what that is. Yeah, that's why there's also so many downs on those indeed. But it's it's necessary for just just for the maximizing it's not even like they they don't even give a shit about like they don't need the drops at all it's just for the teamwork score i mean the crypto slayer and the yeah. armor is nice it's if nice you accidentally shoot you can fix your accuracy and the armor makes it so you take less damage yeah but you don't need it right like they're not essential yeah, yeah. you're just on the grenade turret anyway all right let's uh also there is a video about the the magazine stuff where I show it in practice, but mm. you will see that. Yeah, yeah. All right. Enemies. All right. I think uh, we pretty much covered this. Yeah, venom ammo from the. Yeah, venom ammo on the forty-five second timer. At nightfall, the rhinos can charge. They can roll and roll at you like they make themselves into a ball and, and roll really yeah. fast. It's funny. Freaky. They can um, only do it at nightfall. Yeah. Right. And then. We got the the wall glitch where sometimes the uh, the rhino that opens the wall to get to let you go to the breeder fight can just come in early for some reason, um, and if you go out there you'll be soft locked. But it, it yeah, this this glitch is super rare. This has yeah. only happened like once to you. Yep, it happened once to me super recently. It happened to some guy in my comments like four years ago. <laughs> I think I heard uh, Pillow or someone of the high school guys mention that they ha have it happened once. Yeah. But it's super rare. I, yeah, we have no idea what causes it. It just happens sometimes. Um, yeah. Don't put uh, Bouncing Betty's or Claymore's on the drill because if, uh, if a Scorpion shoots them or if a Rhino does his AoE attack thing, they will blow up and count as enemy damage. Uh, and they do enough to one-shot the drill. Well, I, I think it's like 70 damage each. So if you have two of them on there, it'll insta-kill the drill. Uh, oh no, one is enough. Really? Oh shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so just... I think it's only bouncing buddies, though. 
I, the, I think I the claymores do it too. I think I tested it. But you know, it has okay. to be aiming at the drill. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The medic upgrade. So the medic upgrade says it makes you immune from scorpion gas. There was a little time when people thought that oh it doesn't work on cedar gas, but it does. Um, that's really easy and fast. Uh, and yeah, and it also awakening plans. The awakening plans. Yep. Uh, then here's the um, the health scalers, except I have them listed here as you know uh, based off of two player. It's the same, right? Eleven forty four double. Yeah. But they look a bit better. Yeah, right. They, it's nicer numbers. <laughs> then uh. Yeah. Got my my baby ultra hardcore. I haven't changed anything with this from. The last uh, update of the spreadsheet, but if, as always, if you load into a hardcore custom match on your own, it's way harder than a hardcore solo game. And then if you, you know, stick AFK players in there, it makes it even worse. And I do a lot of challenge yeah, it's runs. Yeah, really hard. Yeah, you can be, get stupid. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Okay, speed tech. These are fun. Uh, yeah, these are fun. You want to take these? You can start. Okay, I will take these. Yeah, yeah, you made the first ones. I will go from QuickBooks or gotcha. So sense print duration. Yeah, this is, these a lot of these are just little little tricks that minorly optimize movement. So the pre square is what I what I called it. Um, so as long as the drill doesn't need to be repaired, you can just hold square next to it as the hive finishes and auto pick it up as quickly as possible, and then um. When you try to plant the drill, it makes you stop sprinting, but you can just start sprinting again after the animation begins, and so you can uh, you move a little bit quicker with the drill. Um, drill movement speed, we talked about that before. It gets rid of the pistol buff. Uh, barrel stacking. So with, um, with the team boosters... With the little 15 second timer, if you throw down four of them, you can stack it up to be 60 seconds long. The same works with barrels, except there's no timer, and you can stack it um, up to, this should say 45 seconds. Because uh, you can uh, put yeah, three boxes up. Yeah, I'll, I'll update that. And yeah, it's useful in like, um, oh, I said running between areas on point of contact. It's useful in a lot of places when one 15 second thing of barrels won't last long enough for you to make it got it yeah yeah then we have the quick books uh if you have weapon specialist plus one you can swap weapons faster um if you press y you start swapping a weapon and you can do other stuff and it will get the increasing speed that you would get from the faster weapon swapping so you can press y and pull out the books and you pull out the books twice as quick uh, which is called the quick box. It's really useful. It makes weapon specialist even better. It's already really good, but this makes it so much better. The quick boxing ammo can make it so you can reload your chainsaw instantly. Uh, quick boxing armor can save your life. It's really nice. I use it literally always. Yeah, the, the quick box. Uh, is there's like... also. <laughs> it's essential. Yeah. It is the glitch. Learn this as soon as you can. <laughs> Never not yeah, there's a video game. about it. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, it doesn't work that well in co-op, but solo always do this. Yeah. Uh, actually, the increased movement speed of swapping your weapons can also apply to other things. You can press Y and pick up the drill, and it'll pick up the drill faster or put paint tanks. Uh, this isn't of much use, but it's just funny that it exists. Right. You can also pull out other things quicker, like a dead machine, if you would press up and right like uh, press y and right yeah. at the same time oh i didn't that kind of stuff that. it's not really useful that often but you can do it if you want yeah you gotta you gotta put that on the back of your pro control <laughs> square and triangle <laughs> right. yeah man uh oh i can do the the g swap so um this yeah, is just i think we talked about this before but yeah you shoot out the disruptor individually it gets locked into a cooldown you pull out a grenade suit, uh, and it'll get you out of the, the cooldown super quick, save a lot of time. Very useful, small trick. Yeah. Uh, then we have to extend sprint duration. I already covered this, but basically 
you can extend your sprint to seven seconds, and with Farewells plus two or Medic, uh, Medic plus two or Farewells plus four, you can go to 14 seconds. Uh, there's a video about it. I use it in the speedrun. Go watch it if you want. Yeah. And then we have the final one, which is the climb while still holding the drill. It's super simple. Um, if you if you hold the drill, you can't climb. And sometimes you have to go up a ledge. You have to place the drill down, climb the ledge, pick it back up. It loses a lot of time. Uh, but what you also can do is you place the drill, jump, and climb. And climbing will cancel the placement of the drill. And the drill will be back in your hands, and you have climbed the ledge. And this will make it so you can climb ledges way faster. Glitches. Yeah, this this got fleshed out a lot by you. Yeah, <laughs> I, I doubled, tripled the size of this section, so I will just uh, speed run it. Yeah. Uh, most glitches are on my channel. I made a playlist with all the glitches, all the tricks. Uh, go there, but it's all listed here as well. Uh, there is a few glitch bots. Um, the one on point of contact in the second area. Uh, second hive that everybody knows if you jumps off the roof on the hive you can stand on top of it you can only do it by scorpions uh, you can also go in the last area on top of the minigun in the very last hive uh, by running and jumping on it uh, you can only hit by scorpions here which is kind of cool and in awakening there's a pretty cool glitch uh, we can actually sit inside of a rock uh, this makes you completely invulnerable, which is one of the only places you can be completely invulnerable, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, you can do this by jumping in a specific angle in a rock. I need to find video of this and add it here probably, because I can't explain where this is. It's like in the first hive of the third area. Yeah. Um, then we have uh, the LOL and the snowball easter egg. Uh, there is a trick with this, so th there, you probably know the easter egg by now. I also have uh, a video on it on my channel. Uh, but if you throw ferals while this easter egg is active, you will keep the wall vision of ferals forever, which I think is a glitch, but I'm not super sure. And if you hit LOLS for some reason on point of contact, uh, the wall vision stays forever, and the gold agents also throw forever, which is... I think a glitch, but I'm not sure. Uh, then we have turret clipping. Whew. Oh boy, <laughs> that was a years. Uh, yeah, turret clipping is insane. The turret, the portable turret, is extremely bugged and there's a lot of a lot of glitches. At the start, we figured out that if you uh, have a turret on the other side of a wall, you can still get on it through the wall. And if you break it by placing another portable turret, you can clip to the wall, which is huge. Uh, then we figured out uh, that you can do it solo by completely emptying a portable turret, hopping off and hopping back on immediately. And this will also destroy the turret and get you through the wall, uh, which is huge. Uh, this only works with a portable turret, though. Uh, then we figured out that if you do this with a portable turret and you look all the way to the right or the left, you can slightly move your character to the light, right or the left even through walls <laughs> and with this trick there's some very specific places where you can go out of bounds and this is allowed for some crazy glitches like uh, the out of bounds solo point of contact escape um, which is insane yeah <laughs> this glitch has come to multiple iterations but now i think we are the final one with the portal turret and we can do so much stuff now yeah the, it, definitely watch this video this this glitch has been evolving since like 2013 <laughs> Yeah, I've been looking for this final one for so long, and I finally found it. Yeah, <laughs> it's there, amazing. There was like a like a two year period where we were just hunting for the double meteor skip, and we finally got it. <laughs> yeah, and then out of bounds escape is yeah. even more crazy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then we have the infinite grenade turret. Uh, it's used by uh, Eric Barnes made a video about it to use it for the infinite grenade turret glitch, which we. Uh, the, the AFK teeth farm, which you already talked about. Uh, here's a video how to set it up. It's uh, really nice. Um, there's also other ways to get into the infinite grenade turret. Uh, you can do it by swapping to the Soflam and picking up a brain in a specific timing. You can knife and pull out the box and hop on the turret in a specific timing. 
or you can glitch it from side of you. I made a video about all the ways to get the infinite grenade turret and the pros and cons. Uh, you can watch that if you want. Uh, the polar turret can't be infinite. Uh, for some reason, if you run out of bullets, uh, you don't get infinite bullets like the grenade turret does. Which is unfortunate. Then we have turret duping. It's very simple. Uh, if you go to another area, you can place another portable turret. But if you place it down, your old portable turret play, uh, breaks because the game sees that there's two portable turrets on the field. You can avoid this by just picking up the portable turret. So you go to another area, place the portable turret, pick it up. The game checks if there is two portable turrets. The game says no, you're good. You place back down the portable turret, now you have two. You can also do this with sentries, which is really good. And if you have two sentries, you can even get a turret sentry. And three sentries are busted. They can complete highs on themselves. Yeah, you can make uh, Here's a video how to do this. Make the oh, game play itself. <laughs> yeah, the sentries are busted. <laughs> well, I cl clicked on the link. Oh god. <laughs> and now I have video. I fixed it though. Oh no, I closed the spreadsheet. Uh oh. We're almost there. You got nine I'm pages left. Much, okay. <laughs> You're almost there. I I still have it in here. Uh, yeah, it's okay. Uh, yeah, I'm almost back. If you give me a second. I've been I've been keeping uh tabs on like little stuff that I see that we should fix. I think um after this we you know we can upload the video and I'll 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 clean up a couple things and then get this. Yeah, yeah, we will update the uh, PDF. Yeah. Writing it down. Okay, infinite mass glitch. This one is amazing. Uh, for some reason, uh, you can override guns with a mass. Um, so, by doing a very specific combination, just watch the video. I can't explain it. It's like right shoot, double down, Y. Yeah, it's, uh, like, a, can... it's like a Mortal Kombat combo. <laughs> yeah, it's like a combo move, but you can have a mass override a gun. It's uh, the best use is overriding the NX1. Uh, which regens ammo, so the mass is really strong. You can only get three bullets maximum because it's so strong. And with the NX, you have 10 bullets, which is regen, which is amazing. And you can demolish things with it, it's super fun. Uh, you can also do this with other guns like the MK32, but it's not that useful. Uh, here's a video where I do it if you want to see how it works. Uh, then we have two player teleportation. Uh, there is two ways to teleport people. First one is with the IMS. Uh, if you have an IMS, okay, wait. So you can teleport people uh, by moving a box while they're picking up the box. So while you're picking up a box, your position gets saved relatively to the box. So if the box is moved, you can teleport that player to wherever the box is moved while he's picking it up. So if you place on IMS, put a propane tank on top of it and place it box on top of that propane tank um, you can move the box around by moving the IMS so if you place it somewhere uh, one person can pick up the box and you move the IMS to a completely different place and that player will be teleported with the box this way you can teleport people across the map through walls it's insane what you can do with this and it's really fun to mess around with uh, here's a guide on how to do it uh, you can also do this a hype the trap. If you have a hype the trap, you place a bouncing belly on top of it, and then you can place a box on it. And then you can move the hype the trap around and basically do the same thing. And there's also a video about that. You can do the IMS on point of contact and the hype the trap on Mayday, Awakening, and Exodus. Only on Nightfall you can't teleport, unfortunately. Until we figure a way, figure out a way to move a box. Yeah. Uh, timing the teleport can be hard since there's always a delay in your speech when you use body chat or anything. Uh, but there's a pretty consistent trick that uh, a lot of people use, including me and the high school runners. Uh, what you do is you jump and then pick up the box and you want the player that moves the IMS to see you. When you pick up a box, you freeze in the air. The other player can see this and he can place down the IMS, moving the box, moving you to the wall. Uh, so by having a queue where he can see that you're freezing the air, it's really easy to time placing the IMS. So you don't have to do a countdown, which will always fail. Uh, then the door glitch. 
Uh, this only works on the 360 version of the game, unfortunately, because probably because they got the DLC earlier and they missed an update. But basically what it does is you can open a door during the producer fight and this completely messes with the game. The ancestors' spawns are basically programmed like doors. So if you open a door while an ancestor spawns, it basically moves up one ancestor. So you can switch what spawns you get and you can switch to the overtime spawns. You can completely break the game if you open the door while in overtime. I made a whole video about it. It's really funny. It's an awesome glitch. In the speedrun, it saves like a minute yeah. more. Like two minutes, three minutes? Yeah, I think it's more like five. You can go into overtime. <laughs> it's insane. It's... Um, and it makes some challenge runs possible because you can make the game easier or harder. You can... It's a really cool glitch. It's, it's the first glitch I ever found. It's the reason I started speedrunning, I think. <laughs> yeah, that thing is crazy. I, I wish that worked on all the consoles. Yes. <laughs> I, me too. It would be so fun. <laughs> Uh, I half can, mortal. I, I will leave this one to you. Yeah, so on uh, on local play, it's possible to partially disable the mortal relic with double class, which allows you to have uh like like have a fully upgradable, usable, functioning class and still have the mortal relic active, which is crazy. Um, the setup is also crazy. You have to first Same. get double class unlocked in local play, so that's kind of the biggest roadblock. Um. And I think you also have to be playing on a disc. You might be able to do digital on like a PlayStation and not on Xbox, but it's easier if you have the disc. So uh, what you do is you go into local play, you equip double class and mortal, then you revert the game to day one edition. So what you do is you're deleting the game and then you're putting the disc back in and playing it before the game updates. And so you're just playing what is physically on the disc. So in, in that day one edition, uh, you go to local play, you change your class from mortal, because you made it mortal earlier, to whatever you want the class to be, and then you update it. Um, if I found that if you actually like load into the games, after changing your loadout, it saves it to the disc a little better. But yeah, if you if you do this right, you'll you'll have like a weapon specialist as your primary and mortal as your secondary class. You can't change uh, the class, if you do, it gets rid of the glitch. So if you want to change your your half mortal class, you have to delete and redownload the game. Redownload the game again. I've got a video of it linked here. It's um, it's it's a really neat glitch. It doesn't have any uh, impact on the leaderboards or anything because you can't do this online. It's only local play. But you know, as we've been talking about, this is this is what is going to make ten relic regular possible. It's, yeah. Yeah. Just barely. Yeah, it's it is it's not easy. <laughs> it's still stupid art. <sighs> but we're almost. And then we have some uh, some smaller glitches. Uh, you can insta kill an ancestor by using the engineer shield. Uh, if you pop an engineer shield, it stops aliens from going into that shield. And ancestors have a pre a pre programmed path they have to walk. So if you put an engine shield in front of it, they will bug out completely. They can't do anything anymore, and sometimes they will just instantly die. I have a video about it if you want to see that. Uh, infinite electric knife. Do you want to cover this? Yeah, yeah. So if you have the electric knife tooth upgrade, um, there's a glitch that makes it so that uh, your electric knife can come out every single knife. Normally how it works is if you uh, you get one knife, and then you have to go a certain amount of time without knifing again for it to recharge. But if you just hold uh, the reload button while you knife, it lets you just keep knifing over and over and over again while doing the electric stuns. Um, and if you have a controller with back buttons, I, I put one of them as, as reload and it makes the electric knife like actually a practical way to continuously keep enemies in like a stun lock because you can just keep like one knife and then like eight lightning bolts stun everything and just keep doing it. Um, also, having the yeah, X on your back button allows you to uh, shoot and aim while searching or repairing the drill or terminals or whatever. It's a good idea if you have back buttons. Yeah, I don't know why the electric knife works like that, but it does. Yeah. 
you can repair, move equipment, and revive other people with your weapon out without engineer. Um, with engineer, you can repair the drill with your weapon out. Anyway, uh, if you knife, put out a box, and if you knife and pull out the box, there's a small window before you pull out the box where you can press X. If you use this small moment to start repairing the drill, move equipment, or revive, you can cancel the box later, and you can get your gun back in your hand while you're doing this action. Uh, here's three videos of Intellium doing it with repairing the drill, moving equipment, and reviving. Uh, it's really funny. Uh, it's it's useful in some runs, actually. I bet like, that would be... Uh, Sigma Hardcore. Yeah. Sigma Hardcore was pretty easy with this, or at least easier. I use this in my run. Yeah, no, that, that with the back button would make a lot of things easier. <laughs> Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> then we have a brand new glitch. It's the <laughs> fence clip in Nightfall. Uh, you know the very first fence where the breeder slams the guy to open it? Yeah. For some reason, if you jump into the corner and you rotate to the right, you can clip through it. I don't know why this works. A Japanese guy in my YouTube Jackson just told me it. He was like, why don't you do this? He thought it was common knowledge. <laughs> and uh, I, I figured it out. Uh, I have a clip of it here. I'm going to use it in my uh, upcoming Nightfall speedrun video. Look out for that. Uh, this glitch is very similar to the roof clip in Mayday. In Mayday, there's the hive in the first area where if you run into the hive, you can clip through the roof and get into the room with the ARX without having to open the door. Which is kind of useful if you want to get the ARX early, if you don't want to open the door. I do it in a speed run because I like the ARX and I can get it a bit earlier. You can get a... And here's a 10 year old video of somebody doing it. Because <laughs> this is 10 years old and they never patched it. Yep. You can get your like uh, sticky flare box made real early if you want with the... Yeah, you can get the uh, crafting boxes without having to open the door. I'll I'll start off for miscellaneous. Uh, I will take over. Yeah. So. At some point. Yeah, yeah. One of these will be yours. Um. So spinning while repairing or reviving uh, doesn't speed the process up. It's just an optical illusion from having the background move by quickly, right? People, people think it gives you like uh like pulses of uh of like revive and and repair progress, but it's just it's just an optical illusion. You can time it yourself. It's really easy. Um. We've talked about this a little bit. If you have extended mags in your gun or rapid fire and you, the other one is on the ground, uh, when you swap from the rapid fire to the extended mag, it's going to refill your magazine for you. Uh, so you can just keep swapping and generate infinite ammo like that, but it, it is dependent on you searching one up, so it's not like a super common glitch. Uh, the VKS, uh, it has damage drop. I don't know what the range values are for it, and I'm not going to bother trying to find them, but it, it does. It's the only sniper rifle whose damage decreases with range. Um, the MR28 can have burst fire, but it's a very bad idea because it uh, it massively decreases the damage per shot from I need to update that uh, to 500 from 500 to 150 uh, and only increases the overall rate of fire, right, because you got to wait for the burst a little bit, so the DPS from the MR-28 yeah. gets halved when you put Burst Fire on it. Um, it makes the... Uh, it's pain. Yeah. It, it makes the damage range like like normal. With the MR-28, uh, as it is, single shot has a very weird damage profile. I'm actually going to scroll all the way back up to the... To the char oh, I don't have the chart in here. Yeah. We don't have it. Never mind. No, I don't think it's in here. Maybe I should put that in. Um, but it, uh, the damage, it just, it goes, um, it, it stays at its max damage, and then it just immediately drops to its minimum damage. There's no, there's no transition, there's no slope, it's just all or nothing, uh, and the burst fire makes it, like, uh, degrees to open. yeah, literally, it, it is, it is, like, one step goes from 100% damage to none. It's weird. Burst fire makes it have like a normal damage curve. Um, 
Oh, we talked about this. The FP6, it can uh, at launch, it could take a rapid fire, and so the devs just made it not able to take that modification type at Aren't all. Aren't you this out? Uh, I was playing on day one edition, and I just slapped a, a rapid fire on an FP6. Beautiful. Yeah, I think I think I was searching with the FP6 out, and I found a rapid fire, and I'm like, what the hell? And it went on. It didn't do anything. <laughs> I I checked. It didn't change the fire rate at all, but. <laughs> FP6 or FP6 rapid fire only point of contact. Uh, <laughs> I had mentioned this. Yeah, there beautiful. there are three different kinds of pistol arc attachments in the code, but they all do the same damage multiplier. I made sure to double check that. Um, enemies taking a lot of damage from a trap will make it turn off quickly. This uh, you can see this really easily with the electric puddle trap on uh, on awakening. Like you put a mammoth in it and um, the trap will turn off super quick instead of lasting for its full like a uh, uh, minute and a half or whatever yeah then the uh, okay the engineer plus three increases trap duration by 33 percent the akimbo pistols have a uh, a slightly longer melee distance than regular pistols do um, and this makes it a uh, this makes it possible to knife the breeder's face while it's healing during the final final breeder fight, which is uh, what allowed melee only nightfall to be possible. Uh, and then and then you you found yeah, the venom trick. It's... Yeah, it's like, yeah exactly. The venom trick is like way easier than this, but technically this works too. Mm -hmm. um, if you plan a drill in a new area before like all the hive symbols load in, it'll just delete the drill. <laughs> And then soft lock the game, so that's why. Uh, that's why, like in Nightfall, the um, we after the first breeder, uh, you don't plant the drill at the closest hive. You go like past it because you plant it too early. You're gonna lock the game up. Yeah, you also have to wait in the third area for the, the icons to load because otherwise you just lose the run. Yeah. Right. Um. Yeah. When an enemy hits your armor, you also take a little bit of damage underneath the armor just to your health this matters for score runs and it's why you can be downed while wearing armor right and when you uh I, I think it's probably just one hp per damage that you take through it or something like that but when you're in something that deals constant damage over time it, it kind of adds up quickly because you're taking this one hp like boom 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 you know mm -hmm. then um i noticed when i was trying to test my uh the health regen that when you get revived the game makes you invincible for like three seconds i think um i guess that's... yeah i noticed actually it's pretty nice yeah because i was trying to like blow myself up with the mk32 and i wasn't taking damage um <laughs> when a whenever a hive obelisk generator ends the currently alive enemies uh get their healths cut in half which is why you can like one knife everything after uh, after a uh, high ends. Um, uh, while it looks like fall damage is disabled with like without the fragile relic, you do actually take a little tiny bit of damage, probably also like one HP. Um, and it's it's possible to die from fall damage without having the fragile relic on, and it has happened to me. <laughs> Unless I'm just how? I think I think I. Like, I was on Awakening, I jumped off something while I was, like, super of low course. on health. And it just, like, just, I was, like, 1 HP and you get... Unless I'm just tweaking and something else got me at that very no, second. Yeah, there's, the, there's our 2 hours 47 minutes, friend. Um, on Exodus, yeah, it's possible to get enough skill points to completely max out a loadout. Uh, but you got to get all three of the ancestors to spawn in at the end of the Medusa, which is uh, rare. I don't actually know how you like force that to happen. I don't know if like a certain number of people. I have no it. idea. It's like at the end of the Medusa sequence, sometimes you get one, sometimes two, sometimes three. You get all three. You it's possible to like fully block, like black out your entire loadout, which is cool. Um, yeah. Then, yeah. Here's our that info about uh about rapid fire, seventeen percent. Uh. Faster fire rate and 5% more recoil, which is countered by adding a grip. And then, uh, yeah, we got our, our note about CS ammo for like the 18th time because this is important. Um, yeah. Yeah, we know about this by now. The maximum 
uh, damage multiplier you can have uh, is this this 2.11x by being a plus four weapon specialist with a, with a normal arc, like a 34% damage boost arc, and you get like your 5% damage upgrade from your armory. Yeah. Here's our that note about the uh, bouncing Betty getting blown up by scorpions or rhinos. Don't don't do it. Just don't put them by the drill. Yeah, it can also destroy sentry guns and turrets. So at some point we were using it for the turret clipping, but not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily. Um. Yeah, don't. Uh, you can't hypno knife uh, or hypno trap these enemies here. I think the hypno knife does do damage to them though. Or am I? Uh, you can kill seekers and bombers with it. I don't think it deals damage to the artists. Yeah, there's there's some there's some way you can like kill things with a hypno knife, but it's weird. <laughs> and then yeah, here's getting here's... a hypno knife. Uh, no, getting knife with gargoyle challenge. Just throw a hypno knife at it. <laughs> oh god, that would make that a lot easier. It would be sick if it worked. <laughs> uh, and then yeah, here's a extras tooth upgrade video from earlier. Watch that one want to know what to what teeth upgrades to get in what order and then yeah you... i also thought of a completely random uh miscellaneous fact yeah yeah if you have 99 teeth you can upgrade mortal <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> yeah nothing. uh 900 you can <laughs> 9999 skill points you can upgrade oh 9999 yeah 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 okay, yeah a lot of nines yeah it's it's nine 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 uh, points is how much it costs to upgrade mortal or um, like earn your keep but or if no you machines. Use speed engine, you can actually do it and yeah. does nothing. <laughs> but you you can upgrade mortal. <laughs> okay, then we have All some. Right. Uh, yeah, that's the. Uh, nodes. That's the. This was the beef of the spreadsheet. Now we're just uh, cleaning up here yeah, after three and a half fine. hours. Um, Fuck, uh, two and a half hours. I wish I got a beer during this. Yeah. Shit. All right, I'll, I'll just, I'll go over this. I thought so, it would take like two hours. Holy shit. Yeah, maybe we could have sped it up, but honestly, it's good. It's good to have the video be this long because then people see it and they're like, oh it's shit. Fun. Like, it's it's real. Um. Okay, so yeah, yeah, all sure. all of the cool, like, thumbnail art and stuff pretty much comes from these links. Um, or yeah, at least the stuff them. I get. Mostly yeah. Lots of, lots of good stuff here. Um, we have three data mines that we know about now. Uh, these are all their links here. Um, they don't have everything. We are still waiting on someone to data mine weapon stats, like uh, damage and range values. Um, once that happens, uh, I will definitely do another iteration of this spreadsheet with um, yeah. with the damage plots for everything. Um, but yeah, we're still waiting on that. There's links to our two speedrun leaderboards. They're the ZWR and speedrun.com. We've yeah, rectified the timing discrepancy between the two of them since we last uh, talked about it on the spreadsheet two years ago. Um, yeah, I would recommend using speedrun.com though. Yeah, it's it's uh, more speedrun based, obviously. Yeah, it's more speedrun. If you want to go to score wins, go to ZWR. Yeah, ZWR. You can upload your score wins there. Um. The Japanese wiki page here, uh, it's cool. Don't uh, don't take it as gospel. There's a lot of stuff that's just straight up wrong, but they have some cool cool stuff there. And yeah, if you're on a computer, you can probably cool. just hit like a button and translate it all to your language. So, um, we've got a couple more links here that I've added. So we've got Curse's score spreadsheet. Um, we've got the global leaderboards, and this. Uh, Alex's uh, chaos mode guide. This is really cool. He's like the number one guy for for chaos mode. So he ha he has his yeah. whole like version of this, but for chaos is right here. Yeah, we know nothing about this, but <laughs> there's not... like some real tech you can use in chaos mode. It's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, it's, there's a lot there. It's not a lot of people play it. Um, but yeah, it's, Alex is the man. Then um, Traditor guy on a discord server he got the 3d models of put them in blender so if you are like a 3d artist person and you want to mess with the models they're in this uh, google drive folder we got our um... yeah i uh i also have 
uh, loves speedrun spreadsheets that I don't think is anybody is interested in. But if you want to speedrun this game, just hit me up on Discord and I'll ask for the speedrun spreadsheets. I didn't put them in here because I think nobody would want them. But if you want them, just ask me. Yeah. And speaking of the Discord server, this uh, this first one is is mine. It's our, our main one. Um, a guy named Brett is working on an extinction remake uh, from time to time. Uh, here's his Discord server. And um, if you actually want to find like extinction games, just with random people and not the tryhards that we have in <laughs> in our sphere, um, the uh, the actual like COD Ghosts full Discord has an extinction tab, and there's some action in that. Then yeah, also. Uh... Call of Duty Ghost has gotten a big discount on Xbox with the Game Pass. Mm. So uh, now it only goes for 40 bucks for the game and DLC instead of 100 So That's if you want to get it, now is a good moment. Got to buy the dip. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I have a, I've, I've expanded the, uh, the shoutouts page. Um, so, yeah, so here's my channel. Uh, I'm Eric, Extra Beer's channel. Pillow, Pillow also helped us a lot with the, uh, with with this version of the spreadsheet here, and then just a whole bunch of other people that are active in the compute in the community, and um, lots of valuable informations, uh, Veneer, Tellium, Curse, Alex, Miskly, Solomimbo, and then Stewie. He hasn't been around in a long time, but this is the guy that got me into speedrunning the first time, so I, I like to keep his thing linked here. Yeah. Yeah. And then um. So here is and, uh, the, we all the changes. Is the list of all the crap we've done. Um, it doesn't I don't look wanna... that much, but it was so much work. <laughs> it was so much. Oh my god. We started this in January. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I would spend a day on just testing one thing. Yeah. Stupid. It takes so long to like test something and actually like be confident about it. Because, I mean, you, you can run mm. a test once and you get a number... And just run with it, but is that right? Is that number bullshit? Is you, you gotta you gotta dig in. Like, yeah, and also all the multipliers is so much to test. Yeah, pretty much every single thing you've seen on this this entire spreadsheet was like by hand tested, except for like the reload times and shit that I pull off the wiki page. But yeah, and then yeah. a last the last chunk is things that. We might want to uh, research more. My number one is just we need to get the the data mined weapon values. That's like the that's the next uh, the next great leap forward that needs to happen. Like that would I, be so nice. If if you or someone you know uh, is able to um, like pull these values out of the code, I literally will commission like someone for this with money. Um, please. <laughs> Uh, I will dip in as well. Yeah. Then, uh, other than that, uh, we need to figure out incendiary ammo more. It's just so weird and like impossible to test. Um, yeah, the the damage is not consistent. It's a yeah. bit randomized every time. Basically, the same exact thing with arcing stun ammo. Our my rough estimate is seventy percent of like the initial bullet damage, but who knows? <laughs> um. Yeah, I've seen a scorpion die by Arkinstone damage, but it's really hard to come up with the exact number of how much damage it does. Yeah, and like it arc it arcs like multiple times. It's like, okay, do those do all the same damage? Does it depend on the upgrade level of your ammo? Like Yeah. Sniper, yeah, that's weird. Sniper arc multiplier, it's there's so there's some weirdness here. It's like the USR can one shot hunters, but the L one one five can't. Although it seems to do less damage off of everything we've tested, uh, is weirdness. That's weird. <laughs> yep. Um. Oh shit! Wait. Did, that's what I was did. Uh. Oh, this is like for sentry guns, right? Or I, I thought it was like. Oh uh, no! This is um. The the mounted. Yeah, sorry. this is the mounted ones. That's what that's what I was going for with that. I I totally blanked. I, I was like, wait. Break into it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The Kraken turret, the, the little the little mini guns. I saw that and I was like, wait. Yeah, you have also have the Nixodas, but nobody uses them. Yeah. Then um, yeah, just just keep looking for data mines. Keep an eye out for them and update these links. 
Holy Jay. crap. Oh my god. <laughs> How much time was that? Three hours, 45 minutes. Ugh. Yeah. Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> Good recording, man. Damn. Wow. Wasn't that, was a nice talk, though. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I would grab a beer before this. If I, I, I thought it would take like two hours, but we are not double on it. Yeah. Ugh. This is gonna take a while to upload. Dude, <laughs> I, I recorded this in 4K 60. I, I'm, I'm so bro, cooked, bro. This shit's coming out next crazy. week for me. <laughs> I hope I can upload this tonight. Yeah. I'll probably use the, the first page as like a thumbnail and just call it a day. Yeah, the, that's basically what I'm doing. At the timestamps later. Yeah.